What's up guys, this is Heiss, and yes, uh, we're going to be doing an extra stream this week. Spoilers! Um, anyone remember when we used to stream, like, multiple times a week? It's been a while. <laughs> it's almost like there's too much crap going on. Um, and I woke up early after staying up late, and all I did was program Century of Steam all day. It's fine. My audio's cutting in and out? Great. Thanks, thanks, stream elements or somebody, somebody being bad. What's, uh, what's it doing? It sounds fine on my end. Anyway. Um, yeah, so we've got a fun stream today. Um, a friend of mine, Johnny, viewer of the channel, who I just met by chatting in Discord, uh, is a class one conductor, and he wanted to talk about old day railroading as a conductor versus modern day and kind of what class one stuff is like. Uh, so we're going to be going in there. I'm dropping audio and frames. No, I'm not. That's your internet. That's not my internet. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting literally no drop frames on uh, uh, OBS, so I don't know what's going on in that uh, that space there, but uh, it looks all good on my end, all green signals. But anyway, let me grab the... Uh, um, let me grab all of the uh, top chats here, and then we're gonna jump into the content. We're gonna we're gonna play Railroader as we podcast, just as something to have on screen too. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> that's gonna be that. So I see Blackbird Gaming out there. Just wanted to say thank you for encouraging me to follow my dream. Work in the industry; it certainly has not been easy, but becoming maintainer numb nuts is the best thing I ever did. Uh, that's wonderful. I'm super happy for you, my friend, uh, and thank you. 19 months as an engineer, you were right there at the beginning too. And then gifting 20 memberships. Blackbird, always. The economy's in tatters right away. Corey Gibson, a class one conductor. It's going to be an electrifying stream. Limes. Limes. Taylor made modding. Uh, yes, Cindy Brakeman. Love it here. How's 491 doing? She's getting TLC. Off season. Um, t <laughs> taking care of a bunch of random crap that's vibrated loose and a bunch of stuff that was done wrong the first time that is now being done the correct way this time. So anyway, true up gaming. Welcome to the fireman. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Everybody's got, uh, everybody's got stuff to say tonight. Look at all this. Jordan Freeman audio is cutting in and out for you. I don't know what to say. It's a, it's a YouTube thing, I think. Um, cause it looks all clean on my end. So shrug. Um, try refreshing, I guess. But thank you for being a conductor for 11 months. Corey Gibson, for people who know the classes of conductors, that joke was solid. Yes, it was. It's not a multi-strand piece, because it's, a, yeah, a number one conductor. Yeah, yeah. I I see you, Corey. I see you. <laughs> Lillian, an engineer for 13 months. Black cats are wonderful because you can stare into the void, and not only does the void stare back, sometimes it trots up to you and happily begs for pets. The void is loud and wants chicken. That sounds about right. Yeah. Super Blue Hedgehog still waiting to hear back on your conductor application. Yeah, the railroads can be... Well, we'll talk about that, I'm sure. Jonathan Snell, you're a class one conductor for the black and white. Well, there you go. So you'll you'll be able to, uh, you know, kind of vibe along with, uh, with what Johnny's going to have to say. Corey Gibson had some cuts out during the song. All good now. Thanks, YouTube. And thank you, Corey. Uh, Farlander, welcome to the Fireman. Oh my goodness. Farm Shop Chronicles. Hey, hi, so you haven't caught a stream in a while, but give up uh, uh, more to make it up, but you spend all your money on Yugoslavian surplus. Bah! If you like this, it's a good thing. William Grantham, engineer for 20 months. G'day, g'day. 20 months, four to go till two years. How the hell did that happen? Be interesting to hear how conducting differs from a driver's assistant like yourself. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm interested to hear because I've, I've always heard all these things, but I've never lived it, so... And Beatman said, as a fireman for 20 months, restart the YouTube app and fix the audio. Awesome. And thank you for the $5 purple. Anyways, without further ado, I'm going to jump in and introduce Johnny in uh, chat. And we're going to start playing Railroader here. So anyway, uh, pachow. Okay. Johnny, say hello. Tell the people, hello. Uh, tell the people whatever you're uh, at liberty to tell them. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, well, with a couple of years of experience on a class one railroad, uh, I've done a little bit of the local work. I've done a lot more of the through freight and uh, not a hell of a lot of yard work, but the, the little experience I do have there is scary and I'm, I got a lot of respect for those guys. 
I can only imagine. So uh, for the sake of uh, all of the fun and the way that uh, class ones can be, uh, we're not going to uh, say anything more about specifically where, what railroad or anything, which is totally fair. But you've you've been with a class one for going on two, three years now, right? As a conductor? Yeah, uh, going on two years. Uh, I think I go two years here in about three weeks. So what what's your experience been like? Um, what what made you want to get into the railroad and and what's it been like versus what you expected maybe on your way in? Ah, uh, okay. So I got into railroading because uh, I grew up in a poor area in the middle of, we'll say, uh, butternuts nowhere. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> grew up That's in the okay. middle of butternuts nowhere and uh, found this. Uh, actually, had a buddy of mine who was telling me. Uh, his grandpa used to work for the railroad and so I started looking around and found an application I was like screw it why not I originally applied for a railroad up in Cincinnati uh, Ohio and uh, ended up landing down here in Kentucky a good old home Kentucky there you go so it's been a hell of a time and so did you have necessary. did you have any expectations going into the railroad um, or was or like how did your expectations or what you thought of the railroad going into it, how has that changed now that you've worked for the railroad for a little bit? Is it what you expected? Did you have no idea? Or um, what? what's your experience like? Uh, before I came in, I had no freaking experience. I had no idea what to expect. I just uh, heard it was a blue collar job and was like, all right, well, that's for me then. Oh, there you and, go. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, after getting into it, I'm like, holy shit, I don't understand how a lot of these people dealt with this. <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, it is kind of amazing in that way. So what's kind of, what's like a day-to-day, -day, what is your experience? Because a lot of people, they hear, okay, well, you're a conductor, you, you go work long hours, you, you're you on the train, but like, what do, you, what do you do? What does your day look like? How does it start out? So my usual day starts out. Kind of like what they show on them videos, you know, when you get hired. You get a two-hour call window. Certain locations, or certain companies, you get two hours. Others, you don't. I get a two-hour call window. I get up, make breakfast, whatever, get ready. Head on down. As soon as I get there, I try and arrive about 30 minutes early to work. I start on the paperwork, getting the work orders and the bulletins. Uh, by the time that's done, my engineer usually arrives. We discuss what's going on. Uh, I call up to the tower and ask them where the hell our power is because we don't have a we don't have an actual service center anymore so uh, our power could be anywhere in the yard PSR yeah <laughs> <laughs> so for the unfamiliar I mean talking inside baseball th those of us who have done even casual rare I mean I, I would say casual railroading or more tourist railroad kind of stuff we still end up having bulletins special instructions all that stuff but when you talk about the paperwork what is that what does it look like for uh, the people who don't really have an experience with that because that's that's really a lot of what being a conductor is about uh, so far as I've heard <laughs> yeah uh, so a lot of my paperwork uh, we get like tonnage graphs how how long our train is how much it weighs how many cars we have uh then on there you got your list of power so like uh i got i had three es 44 ahs the other day and they pull on my line of road 4400 tons a piece right now other lines of roads and ferries whatever you got to go in you got to calculate how much you're good for if you got too many cars you're too heavy you got to leave some in the yard that's all discussed with the uh the hump tower and uh, certain places it's discussed with the bowl and MTOs. Uh, and then in the back of that, if you got any hazardous material, it states, you know, what you got, what it's, you know, what it's hauling, um, phone numbers, people to contact. You got paperwork to give to first responders if something were to happen. And then uh, just basically anything to keep people safe and out of the way. There you go. So once you get on the power, you're with your engineer. Uh, what happens from there? What it, What is your role in the cab? My role in the cab is just to uh, look over our bulletins. Uh, I'll go over with him. He goes and finds the uh, how much fuel the power has, if we're good on that. Uh, I know a lot of you, I know you've talked a lot about PTC or uh, positive train control. 
that's a bitch to set up first when you get in. <laughs> yeah, yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole uh, joy. Yeah, you got to go through getting PTC set up. You got to get TO set up. Uh, then you'll call up the local dispatcher there. We've got three on the line of road I run. We've got uh, one that's in the yard, one that's on our main line of road, and then one that's in the other area or the other local area uh, that we go into. Right. Usually you'll start out with your dispatcher on your line of road, or not on your line of road, but in that uh, location you're coming out of the yard. You'll tell him, hey, you know, this is the train. You'd go through this tonnage. We're good on tonnage. Got plenty of fuel, plenty of power. PTC, and we got trip optimizer, so PTC and TO is operational. You know, we need a signal out to start doubling up our train. <laughs> yeah, I guess you uh, you probably don't have anything hardly that's not doubled anymore. Uh, if I uh, had to guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's never one track and go. It's always, you gotta come, you know, either you come off the main line, you go in, you pick one up, go back out and double it to that, or you double two of them out of the yard. So like, uh, you know, I had a double the other day from A15 to A16 and go. So pulled one track out of, out of A15, which was, God, I believe it was almost 65 cars. And the other track was almost 48 cars. So. Yeah, that's uh, that adds up. That's that's one of the joys of precision scheduled railroading these days is that the trains uh, are more profitable when they're longer. And your folks like yourself are dealing with fewer cars uh, for better or for worse. And most of the yards and other infrastructure weren't really set up for these giant trains. And so um, at least in... In my terminal, when I worked for BNSF, uh, not that I was part of the train crews, but, you know, you'd be seeing and kind of hearing everything that was going on and all that fun jazz. Um, it was very common to hear about, oh, yeah, they're doubling, they're tripling, sometimes even quadrupling over. So they're picking up four different cuts of cars uh, because it didn't fit on one track. It fit on four tracks. Uh, and so they'd have to go up and, and lace things up and uh, and figure it out from there, which always makes the start of your day a little interesting because, uh, I mean, I don't know. How does um, how does an air test work on something when you're doubling over that many cars? Do you have to do another terminal air test, like a complete test, or is it just a, a shorter set and release kind of thing? It's uh, So the class one's done by the car man in each track. They test them individually. And then when you double them up, you get a EOT, end of train device, hooked up to the rear you'll do a set guy checks the rear car brake set you kick them off they release good to go okay so because they did the big test on every individual car in the individual cuts you can then just do a kind of set and release more or less uh, a lesser terminal test okay yeah interesting the, the simple class three is what we call it <laughs> there you go that that's actually pretty consistent with uh, with what I've experienced on the narrow gauge, which is kind of funny that that uh, that still translates over. Um, great conversation so far. I do have to take a look at top chats here, and then of course, if you guys have questions about what it's like to work for the real railroad, or you have questions for Johnny, by all means, feel free and chat them, and we'll try and see what we can grab as well. Who's blowing oh, yes. my whistle? <laughs> Somebody's blowing my whistle. Ew. It's fine. Yeah, I've, I've uh, stolen three out of the shed here, and I'm heading way, uh, east towards uh, the interchange. It's uh, it's the nice thing about this railroad and railroaders that it's pretty straightforward to operate. You kind of you can kind of figure out what's gonna happen every time. So anyway, yeah. from Corvette Raven, just one more month till your next lamp. Five months as an engineer. Thank you, my friend. Bacon M13 for. Holy smoke cheese, 20 months as an engineer. Thank you, my friend. We've lasted longer than most railroads in the history of the U.S. Uh, somehow, yeah, it's kind of amazing that that's, uh, that's how long memberships have been around. It doesn't even feel like I've been doing uh, the content for that long, and here we are. <laughs> CPC Farms, Corey had competition, read all for me. Oh, oh boy, more puns. <clears throat> let's see chats jumping all around Z zvk studios welcome to the conductors go check out the uh the extra videos for you guys when you get a chance there's a lot of cool stuff back in there purple this will be nice to hear what it's like because you've been looking to be a contractor i assume you mean a conductor but yes uh, blackbird gaming i think my favorite bulletin was the time you got form b number 6969 nice nice <laughs> for oh, the uh 
the story after that. Oh, I'm sure you do. Um, for the uninitiated, a form B is uh, track and time for maintenance away type folks. So they go request that they could go work out on the uh, on the railroad uh, and basically say, hey, we're not going to get hit by a choo-choo while we do this. That That's the very simplified look at it. Obviously, it gets much more complex than that, and it ties into PTC and all that crap now. So anyway, but uh, all that fun stuff. Random Texan, oh, this man's save had 100 cars, 100 plus car long consists. I've seen people do that in this game, so uh, not surprised. Southern Pacific AC9, a month of firemen. You come bearing news that you'll get your license. You'll be volunteering at the Chandler Railroad Museum. Hopefully drive the last Magma Arizona locomotives operating in Arizona. Awesome. That's exciting, man. Jonathan Snell, you're a yard job most of the time with no yard masters, so making cut sheets and know the class code for local and where they go and another paperwork is high and the paperwork are like speed and height. Uh, that sounds like a pain in the butt. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for that. Um, uh, Johnny, what's your story about the, uh, the Form B? Oh, man. So... Uh, not too long ago, there was a tornado that ripped through a town and turned one of our trains over. They had a Form B out there where we couldn't, you know, couldn't go through without permission. Right. So we're rolling down the tracks. I'm on an intermodal train, you know, high speed train, wanting us gone, gone, gone. <laughs> Dude gives me permission, you know, max speed through his area where he's working. Everybody's clear of the tracks. We come rolling around the bend doing about 48, 49 mile an hour. There is four maintenance away workers standing in the gauge of my rail ah oh, that's not fun ever nope and uh those four uh we're hollering over the radio telling them to get out of the way we're i mean we're almost putting the train in emergency trying to get this thing down oh. that's know, last last thing we want to do is roll through a form form w as we call it no kidding uh, and hit somebody <laughs> Yikes! Uh, you know, told me, told us max speed. Everybody's clear. It's like okay, it's fine. Sounds good. Here we go. You got, you got the the approval to to enter the work zone. So the fact that the guys weren't clear is not that's ideal. On, that's on them, man. Right. That's on them. Right. And and that's one of those things that's that's gotta suck. I mean, close calls like that. I mean, if you're operating a train that size, um, you can dump it, but. Congrats. It's not going to stop quickly. <laughs> it's not going to stop quickly. And then, you know, hopefully, obviously, your your main concern is not hitting someone, of course, right? Yeah. But but even then, if they get out of the way and no one's hurt, if you dump a train of that size, I mean, I, I've always heard it's pretty common that uh, it tends to give you all sorts of problems later because uh, you're stopping really, really hard. And then you have to wait for all that to recharge. And then the likelihood that you pull something apart, break a knuckle, something like that. Um yeah, that's uh, not a fun time. So. Oh, that is yeah, that is the truth, man. We uh, I think we ended up getting it almost down to a stop. We got down to like four mile an hour, uh, and everybody got clear. Everybody was good. Nobody's hurt. Well. But <laughs> shit, man. I, I think me and the engineer both shit our pants that day. Not surprised. That's one of those days on the railroad that's not uh, not not the greatest. But uh, no. hey. Nobody got hurt, so at least there's that. Yeah. All right. Let's see. From Crosby3, 12 months as a member and also final month as one. Your question is, what courses are more or less important to study in high school? Well, that depends on entirely what uh, what you want to end up doing for a living. If you want to, if you want to work for the railroad, um, there's not Man. anything... <laughs> terribly specific i mean math is yeah helpful enough but you don't need to be uh an expert in calculus to run, run a train so or even work on them heck um which is fine i mean if you want to get into more of the back end and be more in the office and maybe do some of the engineering stuff math science all that stuff but i mean it really depends on what you want to do with uh with what you've got going on in your life so that's a, that's a question you must answer for yourself Sir Liv, question for John. How bad is the modern railroad to work for from the inside? Does management really flat not give a toss about the workers at all? Uh, uh, loaded question. All, all, <laughs> all depends. So we do have some managers that are all for the workers and they do care. And then you got some managers that are just assholes and won't, won't give two dams what you do. That's, I mean, that lined up with my experience. Um, I, I was not cut out for railroad management. I did a good job at it. Um, 
I was liked by my by most of the guys and then by my bosses. Um, I actually made my, uh, my, my the, the, the big boss of the shop. I actually cried when I told him I was going to quit. Um, so I, do, I was doing something right. But uh, the, in my experience, the culture of working for a big company and, and any of the class ones are such a big company at this point. The culture of it is that a lot of the desire for profit and a lot of the desire for efficiency that comes from folks that are at HQ um, trying to, you know, make efficiencies and make the company better in the way that they can see. Um, and they don't have the experience of the boots on the ground in any way, shape or form um, leads to a lot of disconnects between corporate says you have to do this and you have to enforce it now. Um, and me personally, I couldn't abide by that um, as a manager because I believed in the guys. I mean, I I hadn't worked on diesel locomotives like my guys were doing at the shop. I'd worked on the steam stuff at the museum, and it's a different thing, of course, but um, I'd seen how these guys were working on stuff and what they were doing and what the company wanted us to do sometimes didn't make any sense and didn't align with it, and you couldn't, you couldn't even begin to explain what needed to happen to some of the guys that worked in corporate because they just did not have the first understanding of steel wheel on steel rail, despite knowing quite a lot about the math and business side of it, or so they would think. Um, and so you get a lot of tension of um, people from down there uh, not agreeing with people in the field and all sorts of stupid tension like that. And a lot of the douchebag managers that it Ooh, seems yeah. like are maybe not so much just evil, mean people, but they're just trying to uphold an unrealistic expectation from corporate because that's their job. They're the lowest level of people that um, are being represented by the or representing the company to the employees, the actual, uh, you know, scheduled or craft or union guys. Um, so it's a weird line to walk. Um, so I don't know. I, I genuinely don't think that all the managers were just there to be dicks, but uh, some guys like to toe the company line more. Um, and some of us didn't. Some of us uh, had a lot of trouble doing that. So, And one of these days, me and whoever's playing my conductor will stop fighting over the Switch. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. That's why I work alone on Railroader. <laughs> <laughs> No, I will never do that IRL because uh, screw that. You yeah, know, they're, they're managing one man crews. Screw that. Yeah, that's that's an interesting thing that'll be interesting to see how it develops because they're uh, they're lobbying and trying to push for one man to ultimately go to zero man crews. They want to see trains become totally unmanned, um, and it's the business and the tech people that are trying to push for this. And will the tech get there? Probably. Will it be? good enough i i don't know if i would trust it yet not anywhere mm. you know and then that's not even that's that's just like safety logistics operation that's not even talking about putting folks out of work that are doing a hard day's work already as it sits so i mean um i can only imagine i you must have had in your you know a couple years here you must have had a time when the train split apart and you had to carry a knuckle back 70 cars I mean, I've, every conductor I've ever talked to has told me about that. Imagine you're uh, the one guy on the crew that then has to deal with that. Like, mm, yeah. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna let you in on a little something. I've not done it once. I've not done it twice. Twice. I've not done it three times. But 15 times. Oh, my God. 15, 15 times in two times. years you've had a knuckle pull apart back down yes. the train somewhere. Oh, my God. Yep. Yeah, wow. I remember my first one, it actually got two on the same one. Oh my it god. Was, uh, it was on a 2% grade. We were going uphill, and uh, TO, or trip optimization, as the company has installed it on our trains, decided to take the head in power, drop its load all at once, and then decided to put it in notch 8 all at once. Ah yes, that's really good to keep all the couplers intact. Yeah. yeah. Good train handling great train handling every every engineer i've ever talked to has called it uh trip sodomizer not trip optimizer <laughs> well I'm, I'm calling it by its proper name <laughs> <laughs> we, while we call it on the railroad i will not say yeah that's uh that's a 
that's an admirable thing. Um, that's uh, that's the way it be sometimes. <laughs> okay, let's see. Who do we have next here? From Galaxy Express 5550, you want to work for CSX since you've gotten out of high school. What is some advice for becoming a freight conductor? Do not do drugs. <laughs> That's the be easy okay one. With <laughs> be able to hang for two minutes on a pole and uh, be able to study because a be lot able of to are lift a lot of fucking... lift fifty pounds. That's a, that's a 80. big one. Is it eighty? Okay. It's eighty pounds. You have to lift eighty pounds. Two hands, two arms, back, knees, well, however you want to do it, just as long as you can get it up. That's the only thing I've heard of guys failing um, out here in some of my friends that have tried to get on class ones or even class threes. Um, you know, everyone knows the don't do drugs rule and all that. Um, and, it, and when I went to BNSF, they actually did a hair drug test. So it's not like yeah. don't don't smoke weed the, the week before. It's no, don't smoke weed, period, you yeah. know. <laughs> uh so yeah, so the company i done i done my stuff through they did a hair follicle test a piss test um and the funny thing is they told me they said well you got a good head of hair and i'm like oh yeah and they're like so you got nothing to hide i'm like yep and you they, know uh, <laughs> when i really said there's some people that man they'll they'll take like a hair from their armpits or from the underneath the you know the undergarments and they'll pull hair from anywhere to test they really will. It was funny uh, when I went and got my uh, test done for BNSF. I didn't. I didn't do drugs or smoke or anything. You know, I just. I just liked my whiskey uh, in college, so I wasn't worried about it. But um, I didn't used to keep my hair long. Um, I I would get it down to about my shoulders, then it would annoy the shit out of me. So I'd just get it, you know, buzzed off and take care of it. Um, and so I'd just done that like a month or two before I went to take the, the hair drug test for the railroad. And so I show up with my ID with, you know, Beatles length hair. And then I've got, you know, a real high and tight kind of haircut for the drug test. Did have to laugh a little bit, but, uh, I passed of course. So, uh, yes. oh. but yeah, definitely uh, don't do drugs and make sure, make sure you're a little strong. Make sure you can lift some heavy stuff. Cause yeah, that's. That's the only thing I've ever heard of guys failing on. We had, listen, I had a, I have a buddy who went to conductor school with me. Dude weighed 362 pounds. Massive dude. Big dude. Big dude. He did the hang test. He did the white, like the lifting the knuckle and carrying it. He did everything. But he failed the hang test three, two times passed on the third time. Wow. If he hadn't have passed that third time, he would have not gotten the job. So it, it's definitely a physical job. I mean, at, at absolute best, and you're not having to deal with broken knuckles, which apparently you're going to have to deal with 15 times in two years. So um, I, I know that I'm just I'm just the bad luck charm on this. <laughs> on the well, some people get cursed with that, so it happens. Uh, but well, at, at the very least, you're going to be you. walking miles a day. I mean. It, when you're going around, if, if you have to go walk the train for any reason, the trains aren't short, so. No. Yeah. Not at all. <laughs> and and if you're going to be setting anything out, if you're if you're not just going over the road, uh, you're going to be out there walking on the ballast. And I mean, it's it's a pretty physical job. Um, and I think anyone would tell you that. So. Recommendation: If you do get in as a conductor, get you some boots with some freaking soles in them that are like shock shock absorbing. Yes, your thousand feet will percent. Thank you. Walking on ballast has screwed up every railroader that I've ever met that has done it for their career. Um, everyone's knees or lower back or whatever, just the 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 way that it worked doing the thing. Um, they're all a little beat up afterwards. So be ready for that physicality if you really want to get into it. All right, let's see what we got next. From Michael and Bessie, did you ever have to deal with Amtrak trains? And are they more interesting or annoying? I've had to deal with Amtrak trains just trying to run on my track for a couple of seconds to get over to their track. So as far as like really dealing with them, no. But they're annoying as hell when you're a freight conductor and you're like, I just want to get home. I can believe that. At, um, at my railroad, when I worked up at the BNSF, um, Amtrak and then Sounder, Sound Transit, which was actually my, my job after BNSF, um, they have exclusive windows 
on the main. Um, and they, 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 they ruined everyone's day, man. It was, um, it was kind of hilarious because it would be like, well, okay, we're going to try and get that power over to you at the shop. Like, we're going to bring it over to you, you know, just shortly. And then they would be late getting out from South Seattle Yard coming up to us at Inner Bay. And then, they'd, you know, we wouldn't see the power. And it would be like, what the heck's going on? Like, they said they'd bring this in. And we're like, the, we got guys waiting to service it. I got guys sitting on their nuts, quote of the shop, all the time. Um, and then you'd see the sounder fly by and you'd go, oh, they missed the commuter window. They can't run crap until 6 p.m. Great. Okay, there goes that plan. <laughs> well, we sat we sat at a uh, at a stop signal, an absolute stop. We sat there for almost three hours for that train to run. Oh my god. Yeah. So I was not happy that day. That's uh, that's never fun. How how common is it that you end up stuck in a situation like that where you're just sitting there waiting, you know, hurry up and wait status? Uh, every day. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, That's kind of what so I expected. The company, the company I have, we have a two-hour departure window. You have to be departed from the yard in two hours. Okay. All right, so in said time of two hours, I can get the train together, I can get everything done, I get everything fixed and ready, we're out, ready to leave, and then we get stopped waiting for another train. You're like, oh yes, get ready and be out of here in two hours. Well, we can't leave because you decided not to give us a signal. <laughs> yep. So, it happens quite frequently, and I hate it. Yeah, that's... um. You know, the funny thing is, in Mechanical, we, we weren't trying to go somewhere, but it, it felt like the same thing of uh, things would just line up in such a way that you never ended up getting anything done just the right way. Like, uh, I, I swear to God, the second shift guys had it figured out. They knew how to play the system to enjoy most of their cell phone time rather than work. <laughs> and you know who you were. Um, everybody's power would be, you know, last couple things to finish up on second shift. Started at 2 p.m. Dinner, you know, lunchtime, beans was at 5. Um, and everyone's power would be ready to go out, like, at, like, 4.30, but guys are already kind of gearing up for lunch. And then, okay, lunch is done, and it's, like, the first of four locomotives gets pulled out at 5.45, gets started up and is put up and is ready to be flagged out for protection at 6.00. And then engine two at about 6.30 and engine three at about seven. So whoever was the lucky lucky guy with engine number four that all were ready at the same time got to sit and stare at his phone in the break room for three hours. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they, they regularly had that figured out. And that's why uh, a shop with a turntable is a bad idea in the modern day. But anyway, it was, uh, it was always pretty funny. But they got their stuff done, so I didn't care. All right. Who else do we got? Galaxy Express 5550. Uh, welcome to the Breakman. Thank you. Sharktooth Bill, welcome to the Conductors. And then J Christopher Springer, welcome to the Conductors. Look at all you guys joining today. Thank you so much. Let's see. Get that handbrake off. From Blues Crew. <laughs> Is that the, the, the voice, the guy from the EBT video? No, but goodness, he's got a great voice, doesn't he? <laughs> Unless you uh, double as a voice actor and you haven't told me, but... No, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> I double as a, uh, a dumbass when I'm on moth time, so... Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> you love to hear it. All right, let's see. Sharktooth Bill. We had a guy fail a signal test and somehow still had a job with NS in your terminal. You've seen the maps in the box. It's not easy. God, I do need to... Uh, I I keep forgetting about this. I always like, oh yeah, we're gonna do mail time. Remind me before end of stream, we will do mail time, because I have something from Corey, and I and then I wanted to show off what Shark Tooth Bill sent me on uh, on uh, uh, in the in the mail. So it was a lot of cool stuff. Um, so yes, yeah, <laughs> it's not uh, signal stuff. I think that was what uh, I remember. Uh, I had a friend of mine back when I was volunteering at the museum. He moved up to Denver. Shout out Tyler if you're out there. Um, he moved up to Denver to go work for the UP, and he was going through, I mean, he had flashcards every day we were operating with all the aspects uh, of the signals. And it was like, that looks like to actually memorize and know what those all mean. 
obviously you have to do it, but I mean, it's a ton. Uh, it wasn't a simple amount of stuff to memorize, so. I, you know, honestly, I completely forgot about that test. That was the that was the test we had the most people fail the first two times. I believe it. I mean, I how many how many aspects know. do you guys do? I mean, it's got to be, it's got to be several dozen, I would think. Uh, let me let me think here. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We got about twelve aspects to remember. Okay. And then, well, I mean, over over out east, you guys have uh, more than one type of signal in some locations. I know, I because uh, a lot of the old Penzi crap's still around, as far as I've heard. Yeah, but so, uh, uh, a lot of ours is the uh, a lot of up north where I used to operate before I started going south was uh, Conrail, old Conrail signals. Right. It's a but, lot of uh, crap. Now, to now keep. I use a lot of the seaboard signals. You all know what the eastern seaboard, I guess. Right. Right. From Blackbird Gaming, walking on ballast is brutal. Hated Thai gang. Yeah, I don't think anyone. I've never heard a nice thing about about working mad, some of those MOW jobs. Mad respect for that guy. Seriously, yeah. Yeah, I had it easy. I I, I ended up putting about twenty thousand steps in a day at the shop, running around with my hair on fire. But um, it was all on concrete, so. <laughs> I wish 20,000 steps was all I took a day. Yeah, right, I believe it. Yeah, if you've, I mean, crap, I mean, most of the trains you run, I mean, are they are they multiple miles long typically these days, or? Uh, so I actually added it up uh, not too long ago. My average train is one and three quarter miles long. Uh, but wow. most of the trains I catch are usually two, two and a half miles. That's just the way it is. And And how often do you have to walk the whole thing? It's when I first hired in a lot, uh, but now it's like, meh, I just kind of wait to see if the train air is going to restore. And if it does, it's a 50 50 shot. And if it does, and I'm not a key train, I don't walk it at all. So there you go. Well, it's nice that you can avoid it sometimes, but uh, yeah. For a three guy, thanks for the dollar. Cowboy Civ, why hello there, what's today's shenanigans? If you, you haven't picked up on it, uh, we're sitting here chatting with Johnny, who's a class one conductor, kind of going through what what's it like to be a real conductor while we podcast and play a little bit of Railroader, because, you know, that's what you do. Um, <laughs> so we're talking uh, real trains, playing virtual trains, all that stuff, and uh, feel free and submit questions for all that. But thanks for being a brakeman for 20 months. I've gotten hell for uh, being a conductor IRL and then playing train games when I get home. Oh, dude, it, that every everyone at the shop was like, "What the fuck's wrong with you? You you take your vacation to go work on steam trains from the railroad? What is wrong with you?" And it's like, "Well, do you want that alphabetically or chronologically?" <laughs> <laughs> I have an agreement with you there. Yes. <laughs> it's just the way it be. But anyway, Super Blue Hedgehog, you got two apps, eight months and three months since deadline. You're still waiting on. Would age be a detriment to starting as a conductor? 18 years of age with a high school diploma is the minimum qualification. I was going to say, um, I don't know if it's necessarily a detriment as long as you got those things down. Yeah. The minimum qualification is 18 years of age, high school diploma. There we so. go. I don't know why the signal's red, but I'm going to blow through it anyways. It's my railroad. Well, I'm at uh, Whittier proper. Oh no, I, I need it's to find a side. I was gonna say, ain't nobody, ain't nobody around me. So, <laughs> I'm. I just now got to uh, Locust Pen. So, there you go. Uh, you're doing the westbound. Yeah, I'm doing westbound. Okay, cool. Doing uh, some drops right now. Doing the local work. Yep, I'm doing all the pickups on the eastbound here, and we made it to Whittier. Um, yeah. let's see. Sir Liv, how often were you held at a signal near a restaurant and sent someone out to grab some dinner or have it delivered to the train? That's fun. Uh, you ever do that? Um, on the books, no. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Uh, off the books, I have left my train, uh, probably about 15, 20 times to go grab food because I was hungry and, uh, brought some stuff back for my engineer. There you go. Yeah, uh, at least at, at the BNSF, um, it was policy that we couldn't have guys leave property while they were on shift. Um, 
And uh, yeah, off the books, I also let the guys do that several times because it was usually, a, hey, we got screwed into having a bad situation. I need you to stick around. They had only brought the one lunch and they're doing overtime. Like, hey, can I go run grab something from across the street real quick? Like, yeah, dude, take care of your people. So uh, I think usually it, it's not uh, allowed again. Big company, big whatever. Liability, lawyer, 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 lawyer. Welcome to giant companies. That's just how they are. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, take care of your people and then you'll actually make the, the damn trains move. <laughs> yes, take, take care of your people and make sure that they have everything they need to do their job properly and you may get things done in time. Because <laughs> uh, there's been several times I've gotten on a locomotive and they're like, ah, oh, yes, you must have all this equipment before you leave. And I'm like, ah, oh, yes, why didn't you check to see if that equipment was there before I had to check it? Yeah, why, why Why is it up to the conductor to do this? That doesn't make any darn sense. Yeah. All right. Burn Bacon Gaming. Heist, don't make me sass you for specific misuse as well. I will taunt you like I did for the Atlantic. Uh, this is the big choo-choo that I have, and we're, we run the, the, the through trains at the big choo-choos. Yes, we're switching with it right now, but guess what? It's what we have, so. I'm actually, <laughs> I'm, I'm currently using a, a, a C16 mogul, so to do the westbound. Oh, you should have grabbed the 282. That's all right. <laughs> it's fine. Nah. Just don't run it out of fuel and you'll be fine. Uh, it's got plenty of full fuel. I got five tons of coal and 3,000 gallons. So. Oh, you'll be fine. Jason yeah. LaRose, uh, railroaders seem to do nothing but train when is go time. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty accurate. We just like our choo-choo trains, okay? Some of us. Some of us just hate them and, and uh, don't do all the train stuff, which is why you know, we get crap for playing games uh, and all that stuff in our off time, but uh, that switch not line, or did we double line that switch? That's fine, whatever. I've got you lined through on the main at the uh, just past where I dropped everything off in siding, so. We're trying to, we tried to do a Dutch drop and it did not work. I'm not uh, sure who's conducting with me. <laughs> <laughs> that would be some important information to know. Conducting unclear incident occurred. <laughs> Pretty much. It's fine. And then cup of coffee. Thank you for the $20. Appreciate you. That's about what a cup of coffee runs these days, it feels like. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Agree. Single um, tier. Who is at Barker's coming eastbound? That would be me. Uh, oh, we're... we're you're, I'm going to find the siding to go into. Yeah, you should be good at Cowie. Yeah, I'm gonna head to Cowie, heading aside. All right, let's see if we can clear and actually line the switch this time. Nope. We're gonna try that one more time. It's fine. And then Chris Lloyd upgrading to a fireman. Thank you, my friend. Shark Tooth Bill, your engineer did a running release on the main line of 287 cars and broke your train in three spots. First knuckle he got was 89 deep. Oh, man. No, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, mate, but your engineer is a deem ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's not great. Yeah. We, any time that we have to grab more than 10 pounds of air, we just go ahead and stop the train because it's, it's not worth it. That's interesting. It's kind of funny. Um, ten's about all we take too, even with the narrow gauge and the steep grades and, and short trains. Um, well, we only a minimum a minimum application of our brakes is seven pounds. And oh, okay. You go up, you go up to ten pounds, and then usually when once you hit that ten pound limit, and knock it off. The train brakes release faster. Makes sense. Yeah. All right, I'm in the siding at Cowie. Uh, all my train is in the siding at Cowie. Roger that. We'll be there shortly. Alright. Set some break up here. Hopefully that rolls far enough. Anyway. Yeah, it, with the funny thing is, uh, our reason for only going about 10 deep, though, is our, uh, our cars being so much lighter and ancient, um, they actually start to slide if you get much more than 10 in them. So, no, uh, I'm not an engineer, so I don't know exactly how much air we grab all the time, but I know the basics of that. That's, that's the extent of my knowledge. About 10, right? Yeah. It's the, the next thing to learn. 
how uh how, seniority wise how you looking how long do you think it's going to be till you get the opportunity so uh i've actually gotten a call uh i'm scheduled for the 18th of this month well congrats man that's awesome yep that's Hopefully exciting because i've been called uh this is the fourth time they've called me now ah well i mean that sounds like the railroad I know that uh, another friend of mine who's with the class one ended up having to move in order to hold an engineer's position. He didn't get to stay in Denver, so. Well, the the, the union I'm with, uh, if you go to engine school, your engineer degree or certification doesn't apply anywhere other than the location you're in. That makes sense. Yeah. You got to get qualified on the territory, right? So. Yeah, that's right. Virgo Drusky, hey hi, it's only been a month and loving the content you post for the engine crew. Also, what's working a local train with many pickups and drop-offs like as a conductor? Uh How do how do you say fucked up without saying fucked up? <laughs> <laughs> Kinda like that, I think. <laughs> well, it's closer to so, yeah. Uh, I, I have worked we have a local that works uh, 17 stops on the way from uh, from our departing location to halfway on the main line. The 17 stops it works, it that's only going southbound, and then it works about 16 working northbound. So, give or take, you know, a lot of freaking stops, and it really sucks when you got to do a lot of uh, switching and spotting, and it really sucks. Yeah, that uh, that's where the real work of it comes in. I mean, our saying is that any switch move takes at least 15 minutes. Um, and th and that's and that's with you know not a hundred cars you know or even if your locals is shorter train I mean still we're we're talking every switch move ends up being fifteen minutes when you're talking about like three or four cars. Um, well, we uh, the rule on my railroad is uh, if you have to do a switch move, just a simple take a car from one location, put it in another, forty five minutes. And, uh, yeah, right. that sounds about right. Now, if you have to spot cars up. You have to tell the dispatcher, "Hey, I need at least two hours at this location." So if you're if you're making seventeen spots and picks pickups at that local, basically pickups or spots or whatever, going one way, I mean, is that a shift? Is that a twelve hour ordeal to do all that, or is it more? Yep, it's twelve hours one way, and then you stay in a hotel overnight or ten hours, and you come back on your rest, get on it, and you start going northbound, and you work northbound. Wow. So this, uh, I know I've got more top chats that we got to get to as well, but uh, I think while we're on the topic, this is one thing that most people don't realize about the life of the train crew uh, on the railroad. And this is what I've never envied about you guys and why I liked mechanical, uh, even as a white hat. Um, tell us about the schedule. What's it like? How's that work? Do you get a week? Well, do you get weekends off? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually privileged. I have what we call rotating off days. So this, you know, I got Thursday, Friday off this week. I've got Friday, Saturday off next week. You know, my, my off days rotate versus if you don't have as much seniority as I do, you're fucked. You might get win Monday off. You might get Wednesday off. You might get Thursday off. You might get Tuesday off. Who knows when you get off? Yeah. The, the planning and what happens usually is a bit of a dumpster fire. I mean... Because it's all subject to how the railroad operates, and the railroad, uh, spoilers, is really bad at operating sometimes. <laughs> so at uh, least... I um, the, I'll let you know now, I didn't get the switch back at Cowie for the siding. So. Okay. Well, well, we'll keep it in mind. Um, <clears throat> the thing that I've, I've always heard um, out west here was that you'd, you'd have the different boards that you'd be on. And you'd see the trains running out of the terminal and you'd see how many trains they were trying to run and how far out you were on the board, right? Um, if yeah, you if you didn't true. have a bid job. Some guys are lucky and they have a bid job that starts at the same time. Like the, the, the real gravy ones were the easy yard jobs where it was like, yeah, you show up at, at 7 a.m., you run the thing, you do your work. And if you're done at, you know, 10 a.m., great. If you're done a 12-hour shift, well, then, you know, less great. But, you know, that was the job and you had a set schedule. And those are the coveted jobs in the terminal. But the guys over the road, it was, okay, well, you know, there's six other conductors ahead of me that are going to go out on this train, you know, on the next six trains. Um, but sometimes if things were going well, all six of those trains might go in a couple hours and then you might be getting called right away. But sometimes power fails, 
there's no power in the terminal for whatever reason. There is an imbalance of trains, um, service interruptions, all that crap happens. You uh, might be yeah. first out and you might be sitting there for two days and not get called. Um, and, and you got to be ready two hours from that call at 24 seven once your 10 hours of rest is up. So, um, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> that is that is very true. I will not disagree with you there. The only thing is, is every job on my on the railroad I'm on is a bid job. You bid on it, high seniority gets whatever they want. I'm holding a really good position where I can't get called for locals. I can't get yard called for yard jobs. I'm strictly crew freight. That's all I do. That but, is uh, that uh, is pretty nice. <laughs> yeah, it is it is very nice. Um, but I say all that to say this, you, you had the, the thing, right? Where you're like, you know, the first six trains may go out perfectly and then you get to you and you may sit for 48 hours before you get called. Right. It happened to me probably two weeks ago. <laughs> I got in, I got in, literally was first out on the board. And, uh, as soon as I got rested, I was like, oh yeah, this train's going to run and started getting prepped and ready. Had my bags ready, had my lunch ready and nothing. About 32 hours later, while I was wide awake the next day doing something, and I'd been up for about six or seven hours already, I got called, and I was like, shit. And now you're up for potentially 12 more hours worth of work on the train before you get to then ride back to either a hotel or back home. So you're, yeah. you're, you're looking at being up for almost a day, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it really sucks. So You gotta imagine, I was up for eight hours, I had two hours to get there, and then I had 12 hours after that. So no matter no matter which way you slice it, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a tough gig. And I mean, if you're if you're a single guy, you don't have uh, family obligations, whatever, and you like to travel, and you and you don't mind having the crazy schedule, um, there, there's good benefits to it. It's neat. It's cool. You you get paid a fair bit usually at most railroads, um, but uh, uh, was... <laughs> it can be a, it can be a little tough sometimes to manage yeah. all that too. So so as look. I... I'm going to add on to that. The uh, the benefits we have, oh my gosh, are they amazing. Our, our insurance plan is amazing. Like 200 bucks a month is what I pay for my insurance, which seems like a lot. But when you're making a minimum of three grand every two weeks, it's really nothing. Right. And then my copay, no matter what happens, no matter what I have to have done, $25. That's nice. That's it. I pay 25 bucks no matter what. I will say that uh, the, the BNSF's benefits package was really nice when I worked there. Um, even if they got rid of the pension right after uh, I started, but you know. <laughs> yeah, I know nothing about that side of it. Like that's said, that's I, the, the white hat side, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what they say about the white hats, right? Uh, lots of things, most of which I probably can't repeat. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that then. <laughs> He's very much right. <clears throat> yep. Bunch of Go bunch on, of man. know nothing. Darn college students running the railroad. What the hell? Yeah. Wait a minute. That was me. Yeah. Anyway, it's fine. <laughs> okay, you're not on the move east of Whittier. Uh, I'm gonna run to Thomas Valley, and I'll hold at Thomas Valley for you. Okay, I am at... Uh, so you're at Barker's, it looks Barker's like. Right yeah. Now, yeah. You Run past Barker's, um, and we'll meet at Thomas Valley. It should be timed pretty well. All right, sounds good. Full speed ahead. See if we can get the saw by here. The eye of sorrow is always watching. <laughs> yes. The, the eye in the sky, yeah. As I blitz through this crossover at 30, it's fine. Oh, don't worry. I'm getting ready to blitz through a one at like 35, 40. It's fine. Anyway. They're, they're good for limited, right? Limited speed, 45 mile an hour. Here there, there you go. <laughs> All right. Back to the top chats here. Pyro Clayson, welcome to the conductors. Maddie Miller, question for the expert. What does a good resume look like if you want to make a start as an engineer and or working on the railroad? Well, you don't start as engineer anywhere. Uh, you have to yeah. start as a conductor and work your way up. Um, so that, but... Uh, there's an interesting level of, if you're interested in trains, don't be a foamer, but if you have good experience that's related to it, like if you say, hey, I've worked with the FRA before, uh, the railroad actually likes that. So they do. be safety minded and, and show your professional references where it makes sense and doesn't make you look like 
you're a literal foaming at the mouth foamer. Like as much as we all of our trains and everything, right? Uh, you, you do want to tailor it a little bit, but they care about the professional experience. They care about you, uh, you know, being committed to safety and doing things the right way, all that stuff. Um, and somebody they know that's going to tow the company line because big company welcome. That's how they work. So, uh, yeah, I'll add on to that a little bit. Uh, they want you to have a lot of outdoor experience already. Um, so working out in the winter, spring, summer, fall, all during the seasons, they want you to have work experience dealing with the weather absolutely true very true for train crew yeah good good ad pacific productions question for the conductor have you seen or experienced a steam train excursion before while working on the railroad i have not uh we do not have any well we do have a steam train that's nearby it's at the uh, museum they do uh they do a, a dinner train on it they go back and forth on a, a allocated track that we uh gave to them sometime back yeah, they don't uh, they don't tend to get in your way anymore these days, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, well, fortunately or unfortunately, it might make your day worse, but uh, <laughs> uh no, no, no. And it said, Oh yeah, the for a special occasion was the only blurb that we got, and I later found out that it was the forty four forty nine shooting for that movie, um, running down on the sub and I was like, What do you mean? And I I knew other people that worked for my uh in in the northwest division that got to go like on a cab tour and get to see the engine and i'm like that's one of my favorite engines and it ran on the main and that's the last time it did it i was like god damn it but anyway damn yeah <laughs> see I, i've been seeing a lot of the what is it 44 14 big boy oh yeah 40 14 yeah 40 14 sorry i i'm not the best memory with numbers <laughs> Oh yes, conductor. Not a very good memory with the numbers. And and what's what's your job? Lots of numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of numbers. But uh, but I man, I, after I've seen the videos of that thing, I was just amazed. That thing shoving a train up and up an incline. That oh, was, man, it was so beautiful. cool, man. It was so beautiful. cool. I loved it. I'm in the hole at Thomas Valley for you, by the way. All right, I'm a little ways out. Um, about a mile. Okay, no big deal. I kind of slowed down coming through the tunnel. <laughs> it happens. Let's see. From Ultra Spartan 890, too busy listening, and now your number two is in the dirt. Uh, it's supposed to go in the toilet, not in the dirt, but, I mean, you do you. <laughs> Purple. Paint it brown. <laughs> paint it brown. How often do you deal with trespassers? Oh, got a couple of stories on that. I can only imagine. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So we had a guy get on at our departing terminal, and I was coming home. He jumped in between two auto racks, and you know auto racks are very long and sloppy. Yes. Like, they, they suck. Well, he jumped between two of them and rode all, like, 187 miles is is our run. He ran from all the way south to the north end of my line of road, and uh, as I was pulling in to cut those auto racks off and show them in the yard, I seen him in between the cars, and I told my engineer to ease them down, and I ran up there to try and get him and as i am talking to the disp or to the uh hump and stuff and uh man it was it was funny because uh one of the guys from the shop came out and talked to him while i was trying to finish up my moves but i seen him take off bolting in through the yard and all of a sudden i see this the the what do you call them they're city police whatever but right he came up and he just this big city police like fat dude and i'm sorry to call him fat but he is absolutely chased this dude down and knocked his teeth onto the ground oh my god <laughs> it was so funny to watch but we, we literally probably lost about an hour and a half of work because of that yeah that's uh i gotta say you know the yards on the railroad tend to be in uh rather dazzling urban environments and uh yeah the trespassers i mean it was all the all the gosh darn time um really i mean it, unavoidable even even as a facility like in my shop all the time we had guys come through drunk guys crashing their porsche onto onto the service track like thinking it was a road or homeless people climbing on top of the locomotives and pooping down the stack i'm not even joking um <laughs> just a little bit of everything so uh yeah kind of unavoidable and i mean all all the time and um uh, Lots of people riding trains, too, that shouldn't be riding trains. And uh, that, that always makes for an interesting time. 
All right, let's. That it does. That it does. Pyro Hey, hi. I'm also a conductor for Norfolk Southern, working out of Conway, going east to Altoona and Harrisburg. We bit of a train master buff and get teased, but oh well. <laughs> Oops, I liked my job a little bit. Well, it, it's always good when you do like the job, and there's a lot of guys on the railroad who are really jaded and really hate it. And uh, th th if they want to be sourpuss about everything, then that's up to them. Um, and that's just the way they're going to be. So if you dig it and you like it, then hell yeah, that's great for you, man. So I will uh, I will definitely tell a story here that might get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so MTO, uh, you know, uh, manager of train operations is what they call them. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I was joking around with one of them one day and I said, yes, master. Uh-oh. He did not like that. That's uh, <clears throat> that's a way to get in trouble pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I was joking around with him, but he he did not like that one. So I was like, okay. It's uh, it can be a challenging line sometimes because I mean the the railroad does embody the shop talk vibe pretty significantly, um, and there's a lot of uh, off kilter off color off everything not pc not uh not necessarily good or in good taste many a times uh kinds of joke and humor going on um and that's an interesting space to navigate sometimes um so yeah that's uh that's a whole thing so expect that if you choose to work for the railroad um i've heard some awful stuff from some people uh some of it joking and some of it not but you know uh, it's an interesting place full of color for color colorful characters it is, so it has a uh, a lot of colorful words and very choice words that get say a lot yes it does <laughs> when so. you're inside the cab of a locomotive and you've had a really piss poor day and an mto is trying to rush you you're like screw that guy and a lot of more choice words yeah there's there's not nice stuff that gets said and yeah um as a white hat i had it said said about me and i was like i understand what i'm asking for for you for right now uh, and i'm sorry but yeah this is this is the task that needs to be done so yeah that's uh that's the way it be sometimes on the railroad all right i noticed we didn't have any bryson cars on this uh interchange uh, interesting well, not all my stuff's that crazy leveled up at bryson yet because i've only been connected there for a little bit so oh, I i'm lying to you there's a bunch of appalachian hardwood stuff Oh, there you go. Nothing for Bryson proper, but there you go. Yeah. Fairy Wolf 75 any tips for improving one's chance of getting a better response than nothing or an automated denial from applying for a conductor's job? Oh, God, that's just... just... <laughs> that's applying yeah, yeah. to corporate America. Godspeed. <laughs> yeah, good. I, I, I'm sorry. I can't really give you any hands on how to get hired on better. Um, but like I said, just outside work... Uh, have a high school diploma, be 18 years of age with a valid driver's license, um, don't do drugs, and that's about all I can say. That's really all you can do. I mean, the the, the struggle of applying to a modern-day big corporation, like, when I worked for BNSF, they probably laid everybody off by now, but when I worked there, there's 42,000 people that worked there. Um, and that's BNSF's not, not the biggest. Uh, so, I mean, it's just a crap ton of people. And so the amount of applications they get and the automated computer garbage that's between you and an actual pair of eyeballs looking at your resume is uh, pretty significant. So there there is some amount of luck in having the right key terms in your resume there, but uh, they change them year to year. So, like, I, I couldn't even tell you what the, what the secret is. So <clears throat> from Corey Gibson, any funny stories about your engineers? Uh, hmm. Well, I mean, other than the nicknames, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. We have, uh, we got a guy, we call him High Speed, and he's gonna give me shit if he ever hears this video, because he's gonna know who, exactly who I'm talking about. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we call him High Speed because he's the slowest engineer around. That's funny. <laughs> it's always, it's always a sarcastic nickname. I've never heard one that was just like, just oh they know that guy's like that no everyone's got to be a little, a little backhanded with it <laughs> what, what's funny though is my nickname is just my last name so a lot of people manage to to get that that's true well my my last name makes for a really good story 
Well, so. only expose it if you feel like it, so. <laughs> so, uh, my nickname, uh, I'll go ahead and let you know, is Stumpy. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> so, they call me Stumpy, because, uh, like I said, my, that's my last name. However, I am a six foot five, two 283-pound dude. I was going to say, you better not get into any, uh, you know, not-so-safe situations to really make that nickname stick. Uh because that would just be too goddamn ironic. I not that I wish that on you, but <clears throat> by any means. So, but it is uh, it is one of the real dangers of the job, of course. So, don't go violate no red zones. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Let's we see. Had, uh, we had quite a few uh, funny and nicknames. And, uh, I wish I could tell a lot of them, but they slip up the top of my head at the moment. It happens. I understand that. From Bacon M13, tell Midland his railroad needs a Pacific. Yeah, Midland, your railroad needs a Pacific. So, <laughs> I've accidentally taken a car way too far, so I'm going to leave it here in Whittier. That's fine. I've, I've done that so many times. Like, oh shit, I was supposed to drop this at the paperboard, and it's in Bryson. Oopsie. Well, this so. is the Slay Mica. Uh, and oh, this, yes. And I've got it all the way in Whittier. Yeah, it's not that far. It's like only one one stop too far that's not too bad yeah from brent hinshaw precision scheduled switching thank you my friend and thank you for 20 20 months as a fireman i can't believe we had had memberships you this long start an argument with anybody from t and e train and engine crew tell them about precision scheduled railroading and they will tell you what the biggest piece of shit that thing is they, they will uh they will have they will have opinions that is certain yeah <laughs> from pyroclasm Currently sitting first, waiting to get called. Well, I'm glad we could help entertain you while you're waiting to get called. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it's when you expect it to be and not otherwise. So. <laughs> From Christopher Springer. Hey, Heist, you say that railroading in the snow sucks. So what is your worst snow experience on the railroad? You had any snow out there while you've been out railroading? Absolutely. Uh. And it, it really is. Really and W. Defect detector. No defect. Hi, Casey. Oh, okay. No defect. <laughs> no, you're no defects. Uh, Anyways. Uh, the, the freaking story I've got about working in the snow, man. Um, we were going southbound, going up a hill, and uh, snow started to cause the train to slip. Whatever, you know. We ended up getting it all caught up, and we started running max speed because you know everybody's way far ahead of us now and uh just decided hey you know what let's uh let's keep on cruising up here you know we got an approach and all that shit and we were like yeah we'll just cruise on up here it'll probably change well turn turned uh turns out that uh two trains in front of us had gotten knuckles so we were on the side of a hill and i had to tie about 42 handbrakes oh because uh, <laughs> we dogged in the Didn't snow for them to fix it. Yep. oh my god no thanks. Yeah. The one thing I will say I've been lucky with so far is I have not had a defect detector go off on me and tell me anything wrong. Knock on wood when you say that, man. Jesus. I'm not, I am knocking right now on my wood table <laughs> that my microphone is sitting on. <clears throat> yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Wow. That's kind of surprising. From Dan Tanner, a year as a fireman. How often do you need to apply only the train brakes, but not the engine brakes? By the way, happy to catch you online and able to chat. Cheers. Good to see you, Dan. Train brakes, but not the engine brakes? That's about every time. I was going to say. Uh, we try not to put the engine brakes on. We always bail them off when we apply brakes. That That's just good train handling and good procedure. I mean, even with a short train. If, if you can avoid using the engine brake for anything other than to hold your cut when you've stopped um if you're if you're if you're moving you're basically using the automatic only um if you're yeah. using air i guess uh, how often do your your engineers end up using air versus dynamics that's the uh, real question well uh, i mean if my engineer has to take over because the train is fucked up somehow uh it's every time we don't <laughs> we don't usually use if it gets to the point where the engineer has to take over it's always in air we don't we don't usually get to get the chance to use dynamics oh interesting okay yeah. i seem to hear well, out west more uh more folks using dyna dynamics over using air anymore 
So. Well, we pr we prefer to use the dynamics, but most of the time when the uh, TO says, "Hey, uh, you need to take over," it's too late, and you have to use air. Well, there you go. Yeah. Virtual Real Fan Productions. Hey, hi. So have you seen the video that was posted about the broker wreck? I have not. I'll have to check that out. Kathleen Schwartz. Three months already. You can't believe it. I can't believe that there's been people. At, we've been doing memberships this long. It's amazing. So thank you for your support. Let's see. Pyroclasm just called out for work. Love your work. Music and videos. Have a good one. Stay safe. Enjoy the shift as best you can. Let's I see. wish you luck. Yes. And may it not be 12 hours. May it not be 12 hours and may you not get uh, any of the uh, <laughs> defects we've just been talking about. Shark Tooth Bill, before I was a conductor, you were a car knocker in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Finished inspecting an inbound track. One hour later, the track rolled past me with kids on a boxcar heading for the hump. <laughs> oh. Oh, jeez. Oh. I feel that. I feel that. From Nathaniel Lombardi, 13 months. Holy crap, love the content. Keep it up. And also 18 bar of steam so cheating. That was hilarious uh, earlier uh, I, today. I literally just finished watching that uh, not long before we started this. That uh, I, I, Again, I apologize on the audio on that. I, I realized what happened. Uh, one of my interfaces tossed an error code and it didn't show me. Um, and it was just absolutely hot sending it. And Windows decided that it wanted to take my audio in, in, in way too low. Um, so theoretically, we're, we're fixed after resets and a couple setting changes. So, yeah. Um, but, uh, God, that video was a shit show. That was hilarious. Um, I felt really bad because I, I genuinely love genuinely competing with Khan. I, like, I was not trying to cheat. Um, and I felt like I, honest to God, purposely wrecked it the first time because I really wanted to make it more competitive. And then the rest were my own hubris after that. The rest was me um, just trying to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> my, my favorite part was definitely the part where you sideswiped your own cut. That was, that was. I I thought I could I could make it work, and then that was just stupid. That was just dumb. That was funny. From the Millbrook Railroad, you've had a few adventures running in the snow. Yes, you have, <laughs> Lordy, Gamer Boy. Do you think the ninety-eight ton Atlantic could pull twenty-three hundred tons um, on flat track? Probably. But uh, descending track for sure. Descending track ascending, for sure. No. <laughs> yeah, ascending. No, yeah, I would totally agree. Jacob Pfeiffer, a crew would let me be in the yard if I'd stay safe. Yeah, you gotta stay safe when you're doing these things. So that's very oh, true. Oh man, there's a lot of stories on that. I'll tell you a funny one. <clears throat> we had a guy who was uh, switching. We we do flat switching because our hump is out of service at the moment. So, dude kicks some cars, and uh, another guy's kicking some cars on the other side, and uh, it had one of those wraparound air hoses because the air on the car was broken. And uh, it disconnected, and the air hose went flying and hit the dude on the opposite side of the yard in the head. Oh, my God. Yeah, it perfectly, like, flung itself off the car and hit him directly in the head. Wow. Yeah. That's that's oh. not fun. Those glad hands aren't light. Like that would no. that would that would put you down for the count if it hit you right. Oh, it, dude, he was he was knocked out cold. Like he like uh, we had the what do you call them? RCO boxes. His right. RCO box, and he he did not respond. Everybody went looking for him. Holy crap! Yeah, we had to send him to the hospital. Man, he was he was out cold. That's not a good day. And no. so the the hose blew off the car. That's dang. That's yeah. uh, that's not too common. So it's it's not, but man, when it when it happened, it just perfectly launched off the car and hit him directly in the head. Like wow. you, you, we had, there's a whole video of where the yard cameras saw it happen. It, it, you can see the hose leave the car, come completely detached, and fly all the way across the yard and hit him in the head. Wow, it's ridiculous. I think that dude ended up going out medical because he physically couldn't work after that because it messed up something in his spot in his neck wow i can't i can't remember the full details yeah that's that's not a good one no from joe pomeroy what's the craziest defect you've run into before leaving the yard stuck brakes pistons get stuck out and they don't retract man you know they that's the craziest one i think i've ran into 
Yeah, it's never fun. Um, and it it really didn't we didn't notice it because it didn't squeal the brakes or nothing, but uh got out of the yard, got all the way down to uh the end where we get ready to go out on the main and a train stops us because our wheels are smoking and we go back and I walk back and look at it, man. It's got a groove cut in that wheel. Holy probably crap. about a half inch a half inch deep. Call the we car shop. To, <laughs> we had to, we literally had to take, pull out, set our cut over on the other uh, on the other track, come back and shove all the way back into the yard and put that car in the shop. Yep, I was gonna say like that that thing ain't going nowhere when you put that to the uh, to the wheels like that's that's the way it be. Yep. Let's see. And from Zoroark 720 Heist, you're still a bit crackly even on this stream. Well. Fuck Universal Audio. There you go. I said it. <laughs> yeah, your uh, your mic's. It seems like your mic the, is uh, but not peaking. It's weird. Well, let me let me dial this down. Is that a little better? Yes, actually. Oh, okay, cool. There you go. That's the secret. Now that Windows is taking me in at the right level, turning down my second interface because I run out of one interface to a second interface because Universal Audio doesn't work with Windows. Thanks. I'm glad that they're ever, uh, uh, up front with I that. What it's called. Uh, there's a banana mixer, audio mixer. I have done. Well. I have done every single voice meter, voice meter banana. I've done every I single one of those. Banana. I have tried every single one of those, and the stuff from UA is brilliant. It is wonderful audio equipment that has amazing features, and it's wonderful when you're recording music for reels. But if you're just if you're just plugged into Windows, God help you. It does not work, and they do not support Windows codecs. Um, really? And okay. and every one of those workarounds, I've tried them all. I bought a second interface, and I run into a second interface because none of them worked. So, be believe you yeah, me, I have been down this rabbit hole. I spent four thousand dollars on this stupid piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a month of my pay. I know it was a it was a big investment for me for the this recording soundtracks. I mean, literally, you gotta have you gotta have the good equipment if you want to record drums and I mean, if you want to do that stuff, it's it is the the cost of doing business. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, um, had I known, I would have picked a different brand. But here we are. So anyway, <laughs> well. I, I'm trying to work out some equipment for my other channel that's eventually going to start. If you ever, if you ever need cautionary tales, just let me know. <laughs> I will, I will definitely, I will definitely come to you if 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 the need arises. Excellent. Well, I'd be happy to help. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm a I'm an auto mechanic by heart, so. Oh, there you go. So I like working on old time cars and stuff. That's always a. Well, not always a good time, but most of the time is a good time. Sometimes, sometimes not so much, but depends on uh, how much they want to help you out. So, yeah, <laughs> I've got uh, I've got my next upcoming purchase is about twenty eight hundred or twenty eight thousand dollars to get the car fully running. Well, it's the way they be sometimes. <laughs> Well, it's estimated to make over 1,200 horsepower. <laughs> that, that would do it. Yeah. that's yeah. Uh, You got places to be with that thing. Yeah, I, wish, uh, I wish that uh, I wish that my the GTO, you know, I mean, it was supposed to have 350 when it was brand new, but uh, I bet you it does about 250 these days. And uh, one of these days I'll get it running a little hotter than that. But uh, I was going to ask you about how that was going. Uh, I, I remember watching a video a long time back about it. I haven't, you know, I haven't driven it in a minute because it's winter in Colorado. Um, but it, knock oh. on wood, it was nice and happy all last summer um, when I was last running it. So it was, uh, it was fun. I mean, it's it's not a it's not a perfect show car by any means, and nor do I want it to be. But it uh, it runs and drives pretty happy. So yeah. a part of me oh, is like, it would be fun to make more power, but part of me also just goes, well, it does really good, so maybe I shouldn't fuck with it. <laughs> Uh, and then there's me with a car that has no engine in it, and I'm just like, screw it, I'm going all in or nothing. Well, that could be pretty fun to do it that way, so. Yeah. From uh, Michael... I'll, I'll talk to you afterwards about it. Oh, okay, cool. 
From Michael and Bessie, sorry, on behalf of the maritime industry, I think PSR may be our fault. We've been making ever bigger ships, and you need those big intermodals to handle a ship dropping 150k tons of containers at once. You know, that probably adds up to a little bit of it, but if uh, if it was just containers, it'd be one thing, but they're, uh, they're doing it with every kind of train, too, so... But uh, that's certainly the uh, the whole thing is the of capitalist nature of do more with less and you'll make more money, and uh, oh. that's yeah. the whole thing, right? So my worst train that I hate catching all the time is a freaking grain train. Okay, it's short, heavy, and it will shove you up and downhill. It doesn't <laughs> care. Oh wow. Okay, it is, uh, it is, my audio is peaking on the way out, so let me dial that back down a little bit. I'm going to be a little quieter, but is that is that still okay? Is it working? Is it not too crazy? Thank it's you. It's okay. Me, but... Yeah, it's been getting better. The more, you, the too, less peaky it is, the better. Too many settings to, to screw with in this setup here, so, yeah. Isn't it, uh, in the red is always the best, right? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Just keep it up oh, there. Shit, I'm going in a side. Who lined this for the Friday? Fuck. <laughs> we got it under control. We got it good. <laughs> I was doing about 66 mile an hour on the track and then drew a lot of And then you blitzed into the siding at Gov Island. That's yep. fine. Yeah. You're almost done there, and I'm, I'm almost to Silva, too. So we're, uh, the two through trains are almost done for the day. It's like Paperboard Switcher is still doing its thing. I mean, the locals actually have to work the trains, but I'm I'm just doing a long haul. So. Right, right. Well, hey, that's uh, that's what uh, that's what you do, right? So. Yep. I almost did my company's policy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's always fun. Hey, got any grapes? No, no, there's no grapes. No grapes, no. Okay, fine. We might have a uh, plush lime, but that's about it. Uh, we do have plush limes, and theoretically, um, we, we said green light that today. So at some point, you will be able to finally acquire these things. Um, and then I'm going to have to edit videos and do some stuff, because we've got uh, got a couple commercials for the, the shop and all that. And I want to give away this boxcar. Uh, I filmed a video of me making it. The first ES and D box car that's seen service, so I'll sign it and we'll give it away at some point. Got to get all that stuff sorted out. I'm entering right that. <laughs> authentically derail. Authent <laughs> it, it, on it authentically right. did so, derail right away. It was pretty funny. What trains need run or who needs help? Well, we only have five locomotives and there's more than five people in here, so I have no idea. Well, then, fine, I'll go fuck with Jersey then. Right. <laughs> that is the good standby. <laughs> uh, slight issue with that. I've been Mark's mystery and uh, mystery conductor this whole uh, time. Well, there you go. So you can't. Well, uh, well then, no. Don't fuck with me. That, that, don't, <laughs> don't do. Don't. Don't do no, it, Carlos. That, don't mess with the boss, man. That would be fun for the stream. Uh, I mean, it would. It would be fine. It's, anyway, Shark Tooth Bill covered Hopper with blown out wheel bearing. It was glowing red. Good lord. Yeah, when the when the bearings oh, go out, they you. like they go out. Oh thank you. We used to see all sorts of crazy crap like that at the shop uh, on locomotives all the time. So. Oh hi. There is a image I sent you some time back about a uh, automated switch that I would love for you to display. Oh yeah, yes, that's right. Some of the encounters that you encounter. This is yeah. a rare occasion, but yes. Yeah, that. Uh... <laughs> well, how um, did this? How did this picture? Like, how did this come up in in conversation? Was dispatch trying to throw the switch and it just wouldn't throw? Um... <laughs> so, we had just had a storm that night, and a train had ran through on a clear signal going on the main, and we were sitting over on main number one, which is actually a diverging track. This is into a single main. And uh, dispatcher goes, hey, I can't get that switch to throw. It's not locking up or something. Go over there, put it in hand, throw it back and forth a few times, see if you can figure out what's wrong with it. I was like, okay, whatever. You walk, walk up to it up. and go, hmm. <laughs> no, uh, that's actually after I cleared the massive tree that was on it. Ah! Yeah, was, yeah. yeah a tree taking out the switch machine would do it. So. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I walk up and this massive tree's laying on it, and I, I straight up holler over the radio. I said, "This bitch ain't throwing." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the dispatcher goes, "What do you mean?" And I said, "Well, it's destroyed with a capital D." And he that goes, "All right, I'm sending a track guy out there and a signal maintainer." I said, "Okay." That would do it. It's pretty funny. Uh, track guy shows up. And he says, oh, "I just need a new top piece," and I'm like, "Oh yeah." And then if you show the video that I sent you as well, I go, "What about this?" And then I'm just freaking shaking the whole freaking thing. So. Oh my goodness. Let me pull that up. Yeah, I'm gonna watch this on your stream real quick. Pull this. Bitch. Goose, this are you doing here. the goddamn whistle thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. That that doesn't need to be attached. <laughs> Oh yes, the motor that throws the switch doesn't need to be attached. No, it's it doesn't have any like signal safety interlocks or anything that need to be like all put together there. Not at all. It's fine. Hey Jersey. Yeah. Shut up. No, oh god it. fuck. Oh no. Look across the tender. We're both flying. <laughs> it appears that there is no ladder here and yet we stand. That's uh that's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. From Appalachian Chaos, might be too, uh, but watch out for Midland putting lead in your cars. I'm kidding. <laughs> Line, you're a good guy. Oh, well, uh, we'll have to watch out for him. He's sneaky that way, I guess. <laughs> Very sneaky. Very sneaky. Go 94 Chevy Z71, thank you for gifting 10 memberships. We appreciate you. And Hobby Fan, is that ESD boxcar in HO scale? You bet it is. We, uh, we did a run of 50 of them. With Accurail, uh, they're going to be for sale very soon, very soon, and they're going to sell out. We're gonna we're gonna order more. Don't worry about it. Um, but uh, it's already in the plan to order more. Hold on. Yeah, we're, we're, we already know that we're ordering more. Yeah. Mark, didn't the group buy out the whole? Like, no, first... the the group said that they would, and then the people who actually ended up buying them out, we sold probably about fifteen of them just in the immediate friend group. But uh, people did say that they would buy like 30. So, you know, people and, and committing to things. What else is new? But it's fine. <laughs> hey, man, I really can't afford to buy that much. Really you, you have a special excuse. You're fine. Although someone yeah. sent me Blackstone track today. Like, and, and nobody's owned up to track, right? HON3. And I have no clue who did it. I didn't order this. I didn't ask for this. I didn't do it. it wasn't me. Yeah. Not it. That's what I, everyone's I saying. It. I, I have a get suspect. It. I, I, I have a couple suspects. suspects. I have the whole loop already. You didn't need to send me more. Well, maybe you need more K28 uh, real estate, okay? Well, I, no. uh, okay, well, I can't argue with that. Nicholas Downs, it's been a year. At least it's 28000 for a fully built motor. Your dream truck engine is a Cat 3406C. Unfortunately, they're like 15000 for one with up to a million miles on it. Good lord. Yeah. No, twenty eight thousand is not for the motor. Um, twenty eight thousand is the total for all the parts to build the motor, yeah. and then to build a four uh, L eighty E transmission and a couple of other things. Oh wow! Uh, all the fuel rails, the ECU, uh, everything else. So I'm literally building this thing from scratch. That's gonna be cool, dude. Oh man, I will. I will definitely keep you updated with photos for sure. Love to see it. That'd be super cool to see. Yeah. I've already got uh, 21,000 in bodywork and paint and all the equipment to actually start building and putting it all together, so. It costs a lot of money to be cool, unfortunately. <laughs> That's going to be a rad, rad thing when you get it all put together. <laughs> I'll tell you the rad thing was. Oh, sorry. No, go you, you go ahead. You go ahead. I'm just continuing on otherwise, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The engine I got is a brand new 2024 uh, Chevy Corvette engine. It's just the block. They haven't even released the aftermarket parts for it yet. So I have to go back with all Chevy GM stuff. That'll be cool. Yeah. All right, from Pacific Productions, a question for the conductor. Have you seen the Late Night with John Oliver episode about freight trains? I have not. I will have to watch that. For that's sure. that's worth a watch just for their shit post at the end where they uh, recreate Thomas the Tank Engine with O scale trains, um, <laughs> and and they PSR Thomas the Tank Engine. It's 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 worth watching. Um, uh, yeah, I will definitely go give that a watch after this. Yeah, 
definitely worth it, so. Hi, 2K7. I come in and Heist is talking about yeeting containers. Hopefully this time is not over border. <laughs> over a border. Yes, cough. Interbay cough. <laughs> yes, Fs in chat for all those dead 282s from today's Tyrell Valley. Gonna sick John Doe on you. That's not the career save. You can't sick him on me. Yeah. Blackbird from Blackbird Gaming. Holy shit, that switch machine. That's about my worst nightmare. Yeah, that would suck. That's that's just like new switch machine time. And uh, yeah, I'm sure that it, I doubt that that's something that you guys would necessarily stock in the right configuration for the type and all the stuff and be interesting. I'd, uh, I, I, how many switch machines would you keep on hand? Probably not terribly many. One. <laughs> yeah. And, there was and, one, and it was in. It was on the other side of the main line. Oh, of course. And we were all the way north, and it was on the south side. That yeah, that sounds about right. So Jesus, from Nazu gifting five memberships. Thank you, my friend. Jacob Pfeiffer, coal crew by me used to build the whole train using only the independent. Lots of bangs from the Slack action crew from the previous uh, message you'd often chat with. MSG, not a message. Huh. Yeah, building trains with the independent. That's uh that's always a time. It's fine. There's a reason I do not work the yard jobs. Yeah. Because they do that and I do not feel comfortable doing it. It's not uh not a lot of fun, but I mean at the same time you sometimes you can't necessarily guarantee the automatic either. So I mean it just yeah. kinda depends on what they're doing, so And William S. Twelve months as a fireman. Well look at that, a golden lantern. You love to see it. All right, I'm coming up. We're at, we've made our interchange with the five um, on the ES and DT here. We're gonna go get serviced at Dillsboro, and then I'm see. Going so damn slow. Anything else to do? I don't know. I'm getting a oh, steam bath on my gooch. What the fuck? Hey yo. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this supposed to be a family friendly episode? Can I uh, can I kick a freaking car to Kingdom Come? Yeah, it's the Absolutely. ES and DT. I would be All disappointed right. if you didn't. <laughs> well, I'm gonna do uh, my company oh, hey, we just policy here in a minute. <laughs> is that is that where my body oh. is? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, your body is like right there near. Bryce. Oh, you gotta slow the hell down now. <laughs> Not Bryce and shit. Um, Dillsboro. Yeah, 60's Dillsboro. a little much house for track, Dillsboro. House track. House track. House track. House ah! track. No! Oh my God! He got it! <laughs> <laughs> Feels, <laughs> it's uh it's been it's been bit now i have to go get my body over here i forgot to throw a switch i just switched those cars you assholes oh that was beautiful i forgot to throw a switch i forgot to throw a switch damn it the train hath become brown Yes. <laughs> oh, man, I, and I just switched those cars. That's all right. Oh. It's the SMDT. We got paid for them already. Yeah, that's <laughs> fair. <laughs> We're both in Euro. They're dead. I got distracted listening to what was going on and completely kicked a car into the wrong track. That's fine. It's fine. Nothing ever uh, bad's ever happened from that. I also kicked it at 40 mile an hour. <laughs> that, that's also still fine. It's also still fine. Blend Pie Nexus, if only I could join in on the fun. We do need to have a members night on, not necessarily the ES and DT, because I don't have enough locomotives really to actually make that work. Uh, maybe someday on the ES and DT, but um, Casey and I keep talking about sitting down and figuring out how to coordinate that. And it's going to be a clusterfuck. I have, but I have a server I can send you if you want to use it. We, we, I might take you up on that. Um, and th there's also been talk of maybe stealing a copy of Casey's server or something. But we will... Uh, we will try and sort that out because it would be nice. Uh, and I'd like to do it not just like engine crew. Like um, it would be nice to try and open it up. Um, obviously, there's only 32 people that can play. Uh, uh, 31 I, other I than me. I have but, enough locomotives. But uh, like it right. would be really cool to be able to just have a collection of people, whoever wants to um, do it. So it's going to have to be a raffle thing and it's going to be a, a whole thing to put together. So keep uh, sign up in the Discord and listen around and, and see if we can, uh, you know, make that happen one of these days. But. I like how chat's saying Jersey's Revenge, but I was the one who... I, yeah, revenge. I didn't do that. I, I had mercy for once. <laughs> and Nintendo I mean... 64 Brown. <laughs> yes, good. Abe Lincoln, hello, Heiss. Hope your day is going good so far, and the ESD would be nothing without you. Why, thank you, my friend. Oh, Khan. Khan's here, and Khan has the flu. 
That sucks, man. Khan's as brown oh, as this locomotive. You... Man, did I pick a heck of a time to join your uh, channel <laughs> in here. My god. You apparently did. It's fine. Pyroclasm, here's your peacup, and I'd love to join too. I know, that... Uh, when I when I put out the call and said, yeah, maybe we'll get a guest on the ESNDT, I had about 100 messages the next day of people asking if they could play, and it's like, well, there's only 32 slots. Shit. Uh, so we'll figure this out one of these days. But anyway. Oh, I, I think I can say, because at the end of the month, it's my birthday, and I've been thinking about what to do, because last year I did a big Twitch stream. It's true. Uh, I'm trying to, to make that the day that... Uh, my domain gets opened to the public. Not the Bone Zone, not the Bone Zone, but uh, Vatican and Southern Lines. Yeehaw. It's for the public thing. <laughs> so, prepare for that. <laughs> That'll be a whole thing and a half. Yeah. Wow. F4 Pacific. It's, uh, it's, doing, it's doing not so hot. It's okay. It's doing numbers. <laughs> wow, the yeah, doing numbers. <laughs> Oh god, that would be mean. I can't say that. <laughs> well, I'm not sure how fast this is going to couple into this car, so hopefully it doesn't destroy it. It's the SDT if it does, whatever. As long as it's not a car we own, don't care. Uh, <laughs> but it's on the ground. That's eh, fine. From 94 just, Chevy uh... Z71, question for our guest. How many times have you had cars cross the track in front of your train? Oh. Cars cross the track in front of my train? Somebody like, run, run the crossing at you. Yeah. Oh man, that's that's just like um, daily. How, how long have I been on the railroad? Let's see. <laughs> yeah, daily. Um, there there is no number to that because it's every single day and at least four times a day. Oh, wow. How many how many are like close 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 calls where it, it's no shit moment? Uh, thirty two, thirty three, thirty two of them. Damn, that's not surprising. The, the statistic yeah, the, that um, that uh, Operation Lifesaver used to push was every 90 minutes, there's a train versus car in the USA, on average. And it's just like, just... how are you that dumb? Yeah, <laughs> we, ha we, we had a train, the, one of the trains I was on, uh, we ended up getting a knuckle. Thank God we did, because the train that passed us while I was fixing the knuckle ended up colliding with a car. Goodness. So... I wasn't the one that had to deal with that, but it definitely would have been me if I hadn't got the knuckle. <laughs> Yeehaw. Yeah. From, from Nazu, pee in a cup and a story, you say. I'll have to keep an eye out. COVID sucks. Hi, Krieg. COVID does sucks. <laughs> Sorry to hear that for you, my We friend. don't say the C word around here. Yeah, we're not uh, not huge fans. Hi, yeah. Krieg. Who, who, who is that? That's from Nazu. Do you know Nazu? Oh. Yeah, I know Nazu. He he's over on Nix's. Oh, cool. Uh, Good. Yeah, he he huh. normally runs our passenger train. Oh, fun. We, From... we, we we tried to get him to do freight, but he 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 wouldn't do it. He's like, no, no, no. I'll stick to my passenger train. It's like, okay. I'll stick with my freight trains. I'm not a big people person. Freight doesn't I would... complain. I yeah. I. <laughs> freight I doesn't agree. complain when it's late. The engines, the engines might complain, but the freight cars don't. So, I've had several engine failures on the line of road, and oh my gosh, I hate it. Well, with uh, with the lack of uh, mechanical stuff going on, and Larero trying to push more and more time between maintenance and everything, I mean, that's not surprising. So, yeah, ninety-two days. What? No, one eighty-four these days, Krieg. If you got computer-controlled air brake. You can go 184 before they see a shop. Really? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So they're going. Uh, they're going six months of service without going to the shop if they don't break. Which means, guess what? They break. Yeah. Uh, I've had uh, distributed power. I've had it completely just decide to say that its emergency brake was uh, stuck open, and uh, have no idea how it even happened the first time. But walked the entire train, didn't find a knuckle or nothing told him to recover and he started recovering and it just blew back out again so we started looking around and found the dp was just constantly blowing cool nice. thanks so i had to set that up like a box car and take it all the way in and that sucked because now we're under tonnage or over tonnage right yeah under horsepower per ton yeah Ugh. <clears throat> i mean in short line world if you're not 
under uh, over tonnage, you're not running. So. <laughs> Pretty much. That's very much the the truth in uh, in short line. It seems like. Well, thank God for the union I have because if you have if you're over tonnage and the and the train masters or somebody tries to make you run, they just uh, send you home with pay because uh, you're not supposed to do that and you're not going to take that order. Uh, that's no fun. Yep. But that's that's the union's way of saying, hey, you're not going to force these guys to do something that's going to get them fired. There are nice things with the union and with the big railroad. Um, that that's one of the nice things when when the union's strong and can take care of the guys like that. But uh, yeah. I mean, we have several short line folks in here. I don't know if you guys want to speak to the, the little differences on uh, what it's like when things aren't so uh, you know big and supported by millions of dollars but uh, <laughs> uh it's a different so, vibe so constantly flogging the power because it's not meant to do that um that's just you know every day you know yep yep like let's take uh, a quartet of rs3s with an over tonnage grain train up a 1.7 percent mountain because it'll work it'll be fine it's fine i have Too taken many of trains that were like one ton to the good up a mountain installed Hundreds of times. Leaves. leaves. <laughs> Literally leaves. Yeah. Uh, Ninety-nine percent ever... of the time, if if the track is wet, you might as well say that you you lose about a thousand tons of of pulling power. Do you ever have a wheel slip so bad that the engine actually goes Perfect. against the outside rail in a curve? Yes. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> I've had that happen. I've had a uh, wheel slip so bad that. You're going up, and then it starts wheel slipping, and then all of a sudden you're shooting down the hill like a rocket. Okay, I've not had it happen that bad, but being slammed around in a cab at one mile per hour, way over tonnage, when you can smell the Bakelite in the, uh, in the uh, traction motors. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Uh, no, I've had, like I said, I've had wheel Dad! slip. To the point where it just decided like that we're no longer going south. We're going to go back north. Wow. And PTC blew us out because it said, hey, you're going reverse. Um, <laughs> you can't yes, go reverse. Pulled. Dumps yeah. the air. You can't Thanks. Go reverse. Yep. Thanks for that, PTC. Thanks, PTC. Now i got to go tie about 40 fucking handbrakes to air this train back up. Yeah, you know, thanks. I don't envy you at all. <laughs> thanks, PTC. <laughs> PTC would have prevented this, right? Wait a minute. Right. <laughs> it's one of those things that's um that's an interesting thing that we ran into classifying how things were happening at Sound Transit was they would classify all the different times that PTC would break. Um and I mean break as in make the train break, not break in terms of oh the actual system broke, although sometimes it did both. Um <laughs> And what the interesting things was that a, one of the big causes was PTC thinking that it that you shouldn't be able to do this, and it was just the engineer trying to do the best he could to recover from a situation like that, and then it was lost yeah. hours because PTC would dump the train, um, and then okay yeah just go air it back up and take care of it again, and you know even for us being passenger um, commuter rail, I mean there were short trains you know maybe it's as short as three cars as long as seven or ten cars I think at, at one point, but. Um, even then, you're still talking a long time to get it aired back up, tested, and back underway with PTC happy about it again. So, not a fun time. Uh, the the thing is, though, is PTC, man, it's just like, once that happens, you're, you're, you're basically in for about four hours of trying to get that shit fixed. Right, yeah, if it, if it really now you're, comes now, out. Yeah. Now you're dealing with the PTC desk, and they're going to ask you 10 billion questions before you can even start working on anything again. Yep. We have, uh, so. at BNSF, we had the help desk, and everyone called it the helpless desk, so. Yes. Yeah, I agree. No it's no shade the to the, the, the folks who do that uh, do that job. That's a thankless job, literally, but um, it was just it, one of those it's, things. It's definitely an important job, but at the same time, you, you, you don't understand what's going on on the ground, so right. I don't envy exactly everything. Right. Well, I took care of everything in Bryson. I delivered all the cars. All right. I'm doing, uh, we're running the pulp woods. We got the empties that were, got fixed up at Dillsboro. You're taking that God room? rest your soul. This thing's at 34%. I don't think it's going to make it. The, the, the Pacific? That'll make it just yeah. fine unless you line me into the house track again, you dick. Sorry. That There's... wasn't me. 
No, You're I need to welcome. run back here and... Oh, don't let me into the house trick, dick. Mm. <laughs> Am I gonna get clotheslined on the tunnel? <laughs> you might. I'm gonna get clotheslined. Nope. Anyway. Shocker. From Hi 2K7, speaking of containers, war story. One of our Los Angeles drivers failed to top off his reefer before ingating at BN. Full load of L'Oreal. Lost fuel over Flagstaff, melted a whole load at LPKC, $750,000. Yowza. That's not yeah, a... Yeah, that's not good. That's not a good day. Yeah. You know, it was one what? thing when when it was the railroad and they had to put ice on stuff uh, and ice the reefers, but uh, it's another thing when it's on the, the trucker for not uh, topping off the refrigerator. Yeah. Oops. Yep. Blend Pie Nexus, once you get a good job, you'll jump to engineer. I appreciate you, my friend, but take care of you first. Uh, take care of your home expenses. And if you... It, uh, something that I was told when I first got hired on the railroad... Try and set your expenses up to be able to survive on guarantee. Absolutely. Do not rely on overtime. Uh, do not rely on the peak season rush. If you do that sort of thing, you will uh, you'll eat yourself out of house and home in some ways. So, yeah, be careful there. You say that I, there is no food in my house because I'm never home. <laughs> well, well, there's also that. <laughs> Northwesterner, remember train wrecking is still a federal felony goose. Yeah, come on, dude. Gosh, hey. dang it. How did I do that? Soccer Gaming 45, welcome to the fireman. Joe Pomeroy, now I have to know what's the process when you do collide. Obviously, we know who wins the fight. When you do collide um, with uh oh oh with uh with a car on the uh on the railroad. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, have you, have you know, ever ended up having a train versus car? I have not. I have been lucky, knock on wood. <laughs> oh, I've been wait. lucky to not experience that. Uh, but I've had a lot of people tell me what it's like. I I was brakeman when we hit a car with a uh, the steam engine. That was that was fun. We had to fill out an accident report with the cops. And uh, there's no spot for train. It's just other vehicle. We have a little card that said that tells you exactly what to do when you hit a car. Oh well, um, wait. Or, and, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, uh, sorry. But the, on the card it says, "Give them railroad ID, inform them that you are required to take alcohol and/or hair follicle drug test. Let them know MTO or Roadmaster is on way." That's literally what it says. There you go. We had um, in mechanical, we had to send guys to do a whole bunch of legal crap to the locomotive. Basically, anytime there was any incident of this variety um we would send rapid responders out why'd you learn that wasn't me why why that wasn't me those are the wrong cars uh oh anyway um we had to send guys out um i'm trying to tell a story how about you guys switch the cars out pains in the asses <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't me Fucking pansies <laughs> you remind me of a guy we call booger Anyway, uh, we would have to send out machinist electrician and they would have to do a mechanical analysis of the locomotive and make sure that the horn worked, that the bells worked, um, that the headlights worked, ditch lights, all the stuff. Uh, they'd have to do an air test, have to verify in any type of accident that all of those things would work so that it was not possibly a mechanical problem with the locomotive. And then they'd have to take a download of the event recorder get the uh, the footage and then get that to a road foreman so that all of the legal bases could be covered uh, first. And that always made it a pain in the ass because uh, fun fact, transportation tries to move trains uh, and they'd always seem to forget that every time this would happen that they couldn't just move the train. And so then we'd be sending guys chasing all over hell and back to try and get this uh, information off these locomotives. And uh, the, the legal people were always really uppity about it for good reason. Because, you know, welcome to the litigious society that we are. But, um, yeah, it was a whole thing. I was going to say for Casey's story, uh, you didn't tell us how they filled out the other vehicle on the police report. Oh, yeah. The, that was the funniest the, part. Our, uh, our road foreman of engines uh, was the engineer that day. So as far as, like, talking with the cops and everything, the person who was supposed to be there was already on the scene. Um which was very convenient. Um, not so much for having to find another crew for the day. Um, plus he was dealing with that, but you know, details. 
the cop wouldn't let us le wouldn't release the scene unless we gave him a make and model of the vehicle. So there's a police report out there where um, a car collided with a uh, steam engine, and it was listed down as a um, 1989 built uh, Chinese SY on an accident report. Because the cop wouldn't let it go. What do you mean and it's it not a Pontiac? Like, <laughs> and I just like I want to like I want to be a fly on the wall of the insurance agent that had that accident report land on their desk and go. You, a what? You got hit by a what? <laughs> Oh, I would, uh... Yeah. I would that absolutely was, was love to hear. Though. Love to hear that. I think the only incident that I can say that was the worst one I've ever experienced was a train. As we were passing on one track, another train was passing on another, and a dude stepped out in front of the other train. I did witness that. Ugh. Um, yeah, those are never good. Well, the funny thing is, is, the train that was coming towards us had a crew on it that had already dogged on another train. And so they picked them up to take them to the stop to meet the taxi to go to the hotel. Wow. Well, guess what? Now all of them are laid off, critical incident. And surprisingly, even though I saw it, I'm not allowed to lay off critical incident. Well, you know, it only matters if, like, you were on the same thing, you know, the whole stupid... Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. No, I witnessed the thing, but I can't lay off. Okay. Yeah, it's not about your trauma. It's about you suing them. And you weren't on the train, yeah. so... Pound sand. Yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I will say I've hit many a cows. <laughs> yeah, that happens. I have decap decapitated a cow before. I, I watched the uh, main rod come down on top of a deer. That was fun. Ugh. Mm. Ugh. The yeah. first, um, first one of my first days at the shop, we had a locomotive come in, and it was like, oh yeah, they said it hit a herd of cows. I was like, okay. So we had to go look at it. Um, and it we went down to kind of give it the supervisor inspection. And, and my coworker was like, oh, yeah, it's new management trainee. Let's go show him this horrifying thing. That'll be funny. Because uh, welcome <laughs> to the railroad. Let's traumatize the new guy. Let's traumatize the new guy. Uh, uh, and we walk up to it, and it was just covered in grass. And I was confused. I was like, what? I, I, I was expecting blood, guts, and gore. And was like mentally prepared for that. And was like, oh, you know, I'll be okay. I got a strong stomach. Like, I, I'll be all right. Um and I was like, why Why is it just, it's like covered in, in, in just wet grass. And my coworker just goes, yeah, what do cows eat? And I went, oh no, that, oh, that's, 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 oh, that's inside of cow all, all over outside of train. Oh. I, uh, I worked with a part-timer <laughs> whose day job was the road foreman of engines for New Jersey Transit Hoboken Division, um, or Newark Division, which meant his property was the Northeast Corridor. And he got a call out one night that was uh, for a scene of an accident um, out on the Northeast Corridor. And uh, there was nothing left um, but a, uh, a single leg. And he picked it up and looked at the corner and said, hey, can you help me get a leg up on this? <laughs> and that's, no. that's, that's dark. But then when you go, like, his job is to wake up in the middle of the night. Right. And deal with yeah if that's what you're dead, used to that he's on the corridor that's what you're used to and yeah goodness yeah yep. Christ. from millbrook railroad you lost a 7200 pound train on a 3.5 percent grade on the seven and a quarter inch gauge you jumped off and left the train land in a pile at the bottom that's not great aaron that's not a fun time I don't i cannot recommend doing that midland highball Pyroclasm, NS sends over tonnage trains over the Alleghenies all the time. Part of the problem with the dispatcher not knowing territories and no helpers to give. Yeah, that uh, that sounds about right. The dispatcher that we have, uh, he told us one day, he said, hey, the next time they try and give you time and initials to take that train over tonnage out of that terminal, you give us a call. We're going <laughs> to tell that MTO to go suck it. That you're, that you're leaving cars in the yard. <laughs> One of the times that um, we built power out of the roundhouse to go over uh, scenic, well, it was it wasn't directly going to scenic, but they uh, they were trying to get these motors back to Spokane, Washington, so uh, the east side of the state, um, and we're on the west side at, up in Seattle there, and we finished up. It was like a GP60B and like a couple GP38s, like not a lot of power, but it showed three units. And they had a, a rookie dispatch or power desk person or whoever it was. And they said, okay, well, we'll send him up to Everett. 
you know, on a on an inner Bay Everett uh, symbol, and then we'll put them on the Evspo over to Spokane, uh, and then they'll put some more engines on at Everett, and it'll be great. And uh, yeah, person saw, oh look, three engines PTC, that's enough to pull this train. Um, and it was two clapped out piece of shit Jeeps from the 70s and a uh, Jeep 60B that nobody had ever cared for in its life, probably. Um, and it and I remember hearing about it like, oh, yeah, the, they're totally going to put more engines on this. Wink. Yeah, it's the railroad. Are you kidding me? No, they're not. Um, and so those engines left Everett. And then we just got internal alerts about them hitting, you know, going up the grade at Scenic where you're supposed to have like 2.5 horsepower per ton. Um, and the road foreman gets on site, assesses things, figures out, and he goes, yeah, you're going to have to send a dog catch crew with another locomotive. And then, like, 20 minutes later, he goes, correction, you're going to have to send a dog catch crew with two more locomotives because <laughs> conditions. It's like, you managed to underpower this train by 8,800 horsepower because you don't know how to read a chart. Congrats. So uh, that's the railroad to, for you. Uh... I will have to go grab my chart here in a minute now that I'm thinking about it. I've got an entire paper that states what number our, an engine is. Like, it'll tell you the number of the engine, what it is. And then you can go over to another part of the chart and it'll tell you what it's good for on tonnage. Right. Right. I'll have to go grab that here in a minute. Yeah, it's, uh, we've, we've had those since the steam days on the railroad. The, uh, we, we have those charts for the RGS, actually, with all, all of our engines, which is pretty neat. Um, and it was interesting to see how they rated some of that stuff. I'm curious how they actually get those numbers, but you know, who knows? <laughs> it's uh, it's trial and error. Well, it was trial and error, and then they came up with approximations for certain bearing types and temperatures, and and then they sort of made things a little bit easier to calculate by uh, making some assumptions and going from there but uh, that's the railroad for you. So. Uh, I am currently following the passenger train out of Bryson. Um, hauling one Silva car. Oh, there you go. One car for Silva. Uh, yeah, didn't we have like three or four more cars on this thing? No. Other than the ones we've got dropped we, we, at Barker's. We, we dumped four at Barker's, but yeah. Oh. That was, that was the operative plan. That's where they were going. We're now running to Connolly with these, and then, uh, then we'll send I this. I didn't know where that other string was going. So. We'll, we'll send this heap of shit back to Dillsboro afterwards. So. <laughs> Let's see. From Darknut96. Hi, Heisen gang. How y'all doing? I liked your uh, railroader or RO critique video. Can you point and laugh at the new Railroads Online DNRGW Class 25 when the update drops? Um. I'm trying to embody a thing that my mom once told me that is if you have nothing nice to say, say Don't nothing. Don't say anything at all? Don't say anything at all. Um, so that's all I have to say about that. Purple, anything uh, for someone looking to do passenger? Unfortunately, we're, we're, we're over people and uh, over the amount of trains we have anyways. But uh, we, we will get there and we will do a public night. Fear not. Corey Gibson, people think it's insensitive to make dark jokes in horrible situations. You need to do it, otherwise you will get fucked up mentally. That's very true. Uh, uh yeah. It is a very... it's a coping mechanism for real. So mm -hmm. there is definitely a coping uh, a lot of help to making so, dark humor. Do jokes. I need to hold it Thomas Valley for uh I... the number four? No, I'll I'll wait. Okay. I would like to expand on that and saying that it really only counts if you're personally involved or personally affected by the situation. If you're making, if you're a, making dark a dark joke, joke to make a shitty joke, that's then... that's a different thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely true. So, from Blackbird Gaming on the signal side of things, every time we have a train versus car incident, it's a nightmare. Inspector, maintainer, and supervisor signals all have to come out and basically do most of an annual on a crossing. Not fun. Yeah, that's the thing. You have yeah. to you have to check all the things and make sure that, hey, uh, is was it the crossing's fault? Was it the train's fault? You have to check all the boxes when ninety nine percent of the time it's an idiot <laughs> motorist. So, yeah, you know what's absolutely funny to me? One of my MTOs uh, responded to a train versus car incident, and the officer says, or the guy in the car says they didn't blow, and my MTO chimes in and says. Even if they didn't want to blow, PTC's going to make them blow. Literally, yeah. So. 
And then from Patrick McNeely, you have the audio somewhere, but an NJT train hit a UPS truck on a back road in Mount Olive, New Jersey, and the roads were such a mess. It took PD, fire, and EMS nearly 15 minutes to get there. The UPS driver was shaken up, but was fine. Uh, it's always a good thing when when people don't get hurt in those situations, but that's that sounds like it was a mess properly. Yeah, I, I had an incident. Um, we had a crossing out. Uh, it was out of service. We were coming down an interchange with all of our empties, so probably like a good 50 cars or so. And we, there was a stop and flag uh, because it was a busy road. So I'm out there dual wielding fusees. Okay. Literally dual wielding fusees. Witness me! Right. So, and all traffic was stopped. There was one guy who didn't really want to pay attention to me. I kind of stood in front of him with the fusee and kind of held it in his face. He stopped. And then we left. We got down to the yard and we get a call from the train master. And he's like, hey, uh, the guy on the phone says you didn't flag a crossing. I'm like, uh, I got two pert fusees at the crossing to prove I did. Unless he tossed them. <laughs> uh, these people aren't that smart. I had, uh, I had thrown two fusees out and I had my flag. <laughs> Um, and I was flagging the crossing. The gates come down, so I had a cub with me. You know, whoop de doo Railroads are running short on men, so they send a cub with a dude that's not been out there a year. This is a long time ago. And uh, we flag the crossing, and, and my engineer says, hey, watch out, those gates are coming down. I tell my I tell my cub, I said, hey, step forward, that gate's going to hit you in the head. Well, me being a dumbass, didn't realize that the <laughs> gate was coming down on my side, too, and hit me directly in the head. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I got nailed by the crossing gate. <laughs> In my incident report, it was crossing gate activated, even though I was told it was a failed and uh, hit me in head. Uh, Mark, were you going to grab those other Connolly cars? Yep. Or just these? I'm going to grab the, I ended the up log getting bunks, sent video. half of them. We have two sets on the railroad now, so. So, oh, see, fancy. that's the golden rule. Complacency is the, is the, uh, one that's gonna get you hurt. Yeah, if you if you start getting yep. comfortable on the railroad, you're gonna get you're gonna get a rude awakening. That's how that works. Mm -hmm. What I, uh, what's number four doing here? Well, I was gonna grab uh, some the cards. Too. If, if oh. we're gonna, <laughs> well, I can give these to you, them. and I can just run my pile of shit back if you want. It's up to you. I don't care. Just put POS on the tender. Th this thing um, needs to go back to the shop. It's very brown. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the Pacific <laughs> got a little... All right, well, going. I'm going to kick these at you, and then you can just do with them what you want. Uh, okay. They got to go up to Connolly and, and come back down at some point. And then we'll see if how fast we can send this thing back to uh, uh, the penitentiary, I guess. <laughs> I got to get this engine back to Dillsboro because I've, uh, I've browned it pretty good. As long as we end up with one of the, one of the bigger engines at Bryson as well. Oh, this is one of the small engines. Like I said, it's number three, so... Oh, yeah, I can go wherever. Four, one of four and five's got to end up at, uh, at Bryson at the end of the day. Dillsboro's further away, so I'll run there for now. Anyway. Shit, I'm about to rear end the passenger train. Fuck. Don't do that. All right, let's or see. Or do and lie about it. That's going to exceed passenger comfort levels. Uh, it will. <laughs> they will. They will complain about that. It's fine. You guys remember uh, MSTS at the end of your scenario to tell you if you've exceeded uh, damage levels or comfort levels depending on your train handling? Right. Yeah, I never figured out how to get that right. Yeah, it would always yell at me, and it's like, I don't remember doing anything wrong, but whatever. It's fine. So Probably I have a story. I have emergency applications. Yes. Well, that that's too, yeah. Because I didn't know how air brake worked back 20 years ago. Um. So I have a story to add to the new V plus running trains too fast into other trains category. So a twofer. So we had this new hire and he was from uh, somewhere in the mid south, I think Tennessee or Kentucky, I don't remember. He moved north and hey, be, uh, be cautious where you what you say now. Now that you that you said that. I'm just saying that's where he was from. It has nothing to do with how I felt about him. 
I'm just saying that's where he moved from and he applied and he came and applied and told us I am a qualified engineer and conductor we're like all right that's cool this will be kind of easy so train master sends him out with me um a couple days into him and I being on the same crew we're shifting the grain mill which is on the grade which again is 1.7% it's 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 not laughable it's a heck of a grade and I have most of the train from interchange tied down on the main and I'm talking like 10 handbrakes and dumped and I'm switching out mill cars because I have to kick out some empties and put some loads back and I make a cut and I say uh, go with the cars out count them down clear the switch and bring them back in for the hitch he says okay and he gets my engineer clear to switch and he starts counting them back and I'm I'm taking down numbers because I have to write up uh, the wheelage and I hear on the radio good for 10 and my this the little guy in my brain went that don't sound right because the switch to where I had the cut was probably about half that and <laughs> my engineer he hasn't learned the, how to count cars yet <laughs> no and my engineer not knowing where the cut is because he's 30 cars ahead of the cut starts coming back and I hear the engine throttle up and I I turn around and go half that Nick and you hear the engine throttle off and the air brake come on <laughs> and because he was already up to speed he, he hits these the cars on the main so bad he shoves my entire train on the main that's dumped back about five car lengths Woo. Oh, that's a and spicy meatball. That's not the worst part. This chucklehead gets off and makes up the hoses on the move while the cars are being shoved back from the hit. Ah. No, 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 right, no. Done, right then and there. Uh. Right then and there, I'd have told him to go sit in the fucking engine. I'm getting you fired as soon as we get back. Well, I... I I, I pulled him aside. I said, I don't know where you come from. I don't know what qualifications you think you have. You do that again in front of me and I will march you into the office. I said, I am going to tell them that you did this because I'm not having you cut in half on my watch. So then they tried to go on his engineer qualifications because they, they took him off of conducting for obvious reasons so they said fine we'll sit him in the seat where he can do hopefully less damage uh no that's not a good idea if you can't conduct or you can't engineer right it's a reason it, it works anyway. that way yeah yep. so so the first clue that we were in trouble was um we picked up light power from the shop so nothing too spectacular and we said all right cut the air brake out he just stared at us we're like are you in the siding or on the main passenger service uh, uh main we lined you up for the hole okay uh casey can you take over i'm gonna have to jump off here yeah i can right. he couldn't figure out how to cut out the stand we're like we thought you've had new power before no the shop did it first oh boy oh boy Dude, so, even me as a conductor knows how to do all that. Yeah, I know how. Well, I used to also be a shop mechanic, too, so I, I knew all that. So No, I'm just a straight conductor, man. Like, I, I have no previous knowledge, but as a conductor, I picked up on how to MU power. Yeah. Well, so, this story gets worse, because it was all in the same day. So, he managed to not really screw much up. We went all the way down to interchange and picked up interchange and coming back. There is a 10 mile an hour restriction on the downhill on the way back. I'm back in the helpers with my engineer because we need the helper power. He's up in the head end with uh, one of my other best friends. And we're probably about mm, five miles from the 10. 
and we're doing all of 30. We get about two, three miles from it, and we're not slowing down. We're hoofing. All right, two miles. Okay, now we're required to radio the head end. Hey, uh, coming up on the 10, we get back a... Yep. Okay. I'm like, I didn't hear the air brake come on. He's like, yeah, neither did I. <laughs> and we get about a mile from the 10, and it's like, hey, uh, coming up on that speed restriction. Roger. Not slowing down. And my engineer looks over at me. He goes, well, we're not being hung for this asshole. So... Uh, he he's like put your feet up. I'm like, I understand I put my feet up and he winds the dynamics out on the helper. And oh You're about to get a knuckle No, no, no oh, We uh, when we we The dynamics came on and the slack ran out and then the the air brake came on all of a sudden because uh, we heard when we got back to town that uh the dumbass got plastered against the windshield of the front locomotive because he wasn't fucking putting the air brake on. And, Damn. Uh, excuse, excuse my cursing. Um, but, I mean, well, you guys say that kind of crap over anyway, but um, he got plastered against the windshield and uh, it's like, yeah, that woke him up to put the air brake on. It's like, we're coming up to a 10 because of wide track and bad ties that the track crew's working on and you can't be bothered to slow down a train on grain and that was the last time he was in the seat uh they then made him dispatcher oh good that's a good spot for him <laughs> yeah there you go. like are you kidding me <laughs> like if i was able to get away with that kind of crap you know like seriously that's frustrating <laughs> it, it, i know it, it... I've got a story for that, too. I mean, <laughs> on the short line, you know, I bet rules. I know, the, you know, the class ones, I know they have people who hide the bushes just to get you guys. But, you know, I didn't really have that issue on the short line. I mean, even our FRA, FRA inspector, he, he wouldn't hide. He would make himself known. So that way, if you were dumb enough to screw up in front of him, it's like, well, yeah, you did it because very blatantly, he's like, I cannot not write you up. You know, like, okay. So, you know, you bent rules. The FRA inspector knew you bent rules. The train master knew you bent rules. So it wasn't such a big deal as long as you weren't getting hurt or destroying equipment. And the minute that you were bending rules and you caused problems, then you would get called on it because it's like you're being dumb. It's like, you know, on this job you bend rules. It's just the way of life. But and you start acting stupid and causing issues it's like now now it's a problem so that was always a golden rule is know the rule you're breaking and why it's a rule in the first place if you're gonna bend it you know don't be dumb absolutely yeah the the rule book's written in blood always remember that so a m and w defect detector no defect all right we gotta grab grab back to some of these top chats here i've been i was just about to ask you if there's anybody there, else the, there's been you. there's been several yeah but, uh, but we've been having good conversations so i was trying not to barge over it too from uh, john deer boy on the subject of coping mechanisms why do you think that service members joke about unsubscribing from life all the time yeah 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 yeah, it's understandable. You know, there's a whole joke about life. Your first 18 years are your free trial, or your first 17 years are your free trial. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. From Jonatus Almedia Heist, come to Brazil. I'd love to someday. My travel calendar is already at dumpster fire this year. Um, I can't add more uh, more international travel this uh, year, I don't think. But... Mark will uh, probably not I be would... going to Brazil anytime soon, but I have an excuse to go sometime in the next <laughs> couple of years. You do, that's true. So, uh, perhaps Goose will come down your way. I, I would definitely love to uh, definitely meet up with you in person if you ever came this way. Uh, uh, I'm going to be in Pennsylvania in uh, September, but that's uh, that's my only uh, east-northeast look this uh this way this year i got florida california 
Croatia, Bosnia, Slovenia, possibly the UK, Canada, and Pennsylvania all on my radar this year. So Is that a full week in September, or what's the deal yeah. with that? It's a full week, yeah. It's the Narrow Gauge Convention, uh, Pittsburgh. Is it? So. Oh, it is in Pittsburgh. Okay, I was going to ask you. Yeah, and, uh, and probably going to play some music at the EBT, too, so that'll be fun. Be good to get out. Tell there you again. what, I may take a week off and just come up and spend time with you. That, by all means, come hang out. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to show up for that. It's it's always the uh, the big the big foamer convention, man. It's a great time, and EBT's a treasure. Everyone should go see it. So, all right, from Mr. Watt, bravo on you on having a sense of moral decency. I hate that I need to say this. If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Yeah, it's a it is a challenging thing sometimes because uh, I try to be as realistic and honest and open and genuine with you guys as I can, um, which is why I've you know I've given a fair amount of critiques towards railroad or and whatever and they're they're always out of a uh, a background of trying to get accuracy and everything but uh, with uh, with the railroads online situation, um, I am too personally uh, charged by it still so we are not going to talk about it. Uh, that's that, oh, that is that is just best I, for everybody. So you're, I'm you're not gonna, going to disagree with you on that. It's it's definitely something. You're, you're gonna miss Thomas for the narrow gauge convention. Fuck yeah! Are you kidding me? Yeah, I, I can't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we do kind of have an important reason to be there. Something yeah, like that. Yeah. I actually not really, but anyway, it's fine. I got, invited, oh. I got invited out to play a gig at the East Broad Top I'll, before the I'll museum's just, ever bothered to call me out, so... I'll just push the big blue dumpster around myself. I, I ran, like, five trips this past, I was Thomas. Say, Did you need me anyways? Thomas after the convention? Uh, oh, it's, it's, it's right in the middle of it, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Oh. It, it's the first three weekends in September, or at least it should be. Yeah, and then the convention is, it, like, the first or second weekend is it's what it butts 14th, up to. It's the 14th, I think. Somewhere in there. Yeah, so it's it's convention anything. back this year. Yeah, it's further back than it was when it was in Denver. But anyway, do, do you guys have actual Thomas or a knockoff Thomas? Oh, we get a we get a three foot gauge dumpster that has a face dumpster on it. Dumpster on wheels. Yeah. So yep. so not so not uh, not Mattel Thomas. So you don't have to pay. Oh no. No, it's Mattel Thomas. It is actually Thomas. Like it is actually licensed oh. the whole thing, but it's three foot gauge and it's not steam powered. It's just a, a dummy. But anyway. Oh. Purple. Oh, you're ruining the illusion. Oh, I know. Real I'm Thomas sorry. Is so much fun. I miss that engine. Apparently, a good one. Yeah, that's right. You've gotten to fire the real one. That's right. Uh, yeah, I've I've gotten beaten, abused, and um, uh, battered by that engine, and I left with a smile every time. I can only imagine. <laughs> uh, I, I we think had that's on the test somewhere. We have. <laughs> We have continued. We had continuous welded rail on my first railroad, and uh, we had a heat kink and a tangent. Uh, and Thomas's wheelbase was the same length as the heat kink. Oh, so Lordy. I went left, right, left inside a tangent <laughs> on an 06 though at 20 cool. miles an hour. Cool. That's that's a fun trick. Yeah, they do the dance. Yeah, they really do, especially they, when the track do. does that. Oh, they do. goodness! But uh, getting to beat up a, a porter at 20 miles an hour, and you do. Three miles out, three miles back, and you're shoving. Your uh, shoving restricted speed is 15, but you got to do 20 to make the timetable. Timetables? What's that? What, what are those? Gonna... was fun. I miss that engine. I'm gonna pocket a heat kink story, uh, just because I have one. But I'm gonna let you keep looking through chat. I was I gonna say I, I am still barely keeping up with what's going on, and and I'm gonna have to run and get dinner uh, relatively shortly here as well. So we're gonna have to be ending somewhat soon. Um, and I know that I said I would or open the thing from Corey, so I need to go do that too. But I also have to pee really bad. So like we got all this stuff that's all at once. Um, let me ca try and catch up on chats, and then uh, maybe when I go run use the restroom, you can tell your Sun King story. Five's all tied down in the shop here. Uh, purple clarification asking about working for a passenger railroad. Well, it's Amtrak, and the process is pretty much vaguely the same, although Amtrak might have a little bit of higher standards in some way because you will be interfacing with the public if you're a conductor. So um, they might be a smidge more picky. I've heard they're a little harder to get involved with. So. I also heard you get free coffee all the time. I've I've also heard that too. Ooh. 
Patrick McNeely, you've got to find it. You have a video of a flatbed's cable snapping, a car rolling off, and slamming into a squad car. You also have one of a Crown Vic keeping it with a motorcycle while chasing it. Goodness. Lordy. And Jonatus, gifting one membership. Thank you, my friend. Sharktooth Bill, if you're in Colorado with no notebook, you're a bad CO. Oh, if you're a CO with no notebook, you're a bad CO. <laughs> I could I could see that. Yeah. Good to keep, uh, keep track there, of those things. I don't know how many of those I've gone through because I'll buy like a pack of like 10 of them. And I think I bought probably about six or seven packs already. I believe it. Patrick McNeely, fireman for seven months. You're such an engineer with your Microsoft Train Simulator. <laughs> we love Microsoft Train Simulator. Uh, Rarity peaked there. Jack Borner, I literally just joined out of zero context, but that sounds the class ones. Uh, yeah, you'll have to watch back the VOD. It's very much class one vibes today. Zimzam, God, listening to this makes me appreciate our small steam road way more. Uh, there's a reason that the small railroad vibe is is a fun thing. And then there's Corey, a reason the small railroads are definitely a lot more fun to be on. Yes. Yeah. Big. It keeps the big corporate obnoxiousness out as much as it can. For Corey Gibson, you gifted 50 memberships, but the birds didn't go across. Stream Elements is giving me uh, single tears again, apparently. That's frustrating. So uh, no birds on that front, unfortunately. <laughs> but thank you so much for the 50 memberships, my friend. Jonatus, uh, gifting another membership. Thank you. Charlie Campbell, the ESND boxcar sounds awesome. You'd love to add to your collection of model rare shenanigans. I once made a fairly with a steam engine and a diesel. I love your content. Ah, uh, uh, but a diesel steam for Oh, that's cursed, but I mean, that's fine. And oh, uh, I got something to ask you later. Sure, yeah. Nazu, yay, economy breakage. We're almost there. Almost, almost getting there. Almost. Gamer Boy Canada, you say? Yeah, I'm coming up for Khan's wedding. It's gonna be fun. Um, it was super funny. He sent me the, the wedding invitation, and I, I always forget his name is also actually Mark, and I didn't know his fiance's name at the time, and I was just like, who the fuck is inviting me to a wedding? And then I was like, oh, it's Khan! <laughs> it's pretty funny. So. T12 Productions, will the heist boy do a CNTS broad top inspired video? Uh, perhaps. We shall see. Pyroclasm, if you're gonna bring, uh, if you're gonna bring Pit, love to meet you. We shall, uh, we'll see what we can organize here. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be there. So, Matt Houston, it's been far too long since we mentioned Lord and Savior Grand Trunk. So, oh goodness, yeah, it has been a minute. I have to figure out how to do it again. Grand Trunk. Yes, we like the reverb. Very good. Anyway, Christopher Springer, where in California? Stop by San Luis Obispo. You know a spot where you can see the entirety of the Cuesta Grade winding uphill. Uh, I went to SLO actually last October. Um, I'm going to be in Fresno next. Ugh. But uh, not for Fresno, for trains. So it's going to be good stuff. <laughs> Jonathan's gifting another membership. You. Thank you. Um, Asakar Tehan, if you're going to be in PA, Greensville has the cursed O102 on display at the local museum. I do want to see that thing. I really do. Zimzam, Percy is worse because round dumpster echoes. The, the square one does too. Uh, I'll take your word for it that it's worse, but uh, they both sound awful. I got two more and we're almost there. Blackbird Gaming can always recommend passenger commuter rail. Even if you're not a people person, there's a good job waiting for you somewhere on the passenger railroad. Very true. Um, I did love working for Sound Transit. Um, of the kind of like more corporate engineering jobs that I've done um, and like bigger company and whatever, uh, Sound Transit was a great organization to work for uh, and the benefits were second to none. So uh, definitely a good possibility out there anyway. And Andrew Frame just got home from work, so I can only assume you're wrapping up in like five minutes. Guilty is charged. Yes, we're uh, trying to get out of here a little bit. That said, caught up. Krieg, tell your story. I'm going to go pee and grab the stuff that I need to unbox. So be right back. Okay. So we're switching in uh, our yard down an interchange, which is flat. And uh, I'm down to the last like five cars in the bar. And... I'm pulling out of the short siding and I'm counting them down. And he just clears the switch and the train goes in the hole. And I go, I didn't need you to stop that fast. And then the radio was still silent. And he gets back on the radio and goes, I need you to come up here. Okay. So I'm walking up. All the engines are upright. All the cars are upright. Everything seems to be in a straight line. I get up there. And I realized that there seems to be no track underneath the six axle. 
Cool. Uh, oh. Which is an M636, by the way. And... Oh. You can... I get up to the engine, and the track underneath the fuel tank had shifted two foot towards the uh, embankment. And it turns out, when he was pulling up, he could see the track actually start to shift in front of him. The, the, the ballast was just giving way, and the tires were just going. And that's why he dumped it. And the track was overhanging the one side of the uh, embankment by about a foot. And I'm like, uh, what do I do? So I call a train master. I'm like, what do you want me to do about this? I'm like, there's a decent chance that if I try to back this engine over this, that the track's going to keep going and you're going to end up with the six axle and uh, in a horseshoe pit. And he goes, well, it can't stay there. And I'm like, all right, your wish is my command. So, uh, we, we back up over this sun, uh, sun kink and it, the track continued to shift, but we managed to get the six axle off without going over the side. Um, but you could clearly see the ties had shifted probably two foot for about 20 feet. It was just gone. It was underneath the fuel tank. You couldn't see the track and it. We went back down for interchange three days later. Uh, they track gang had fixed the problem. We were told. And I went down there with four axles, and my my engineer and I crept up on it, and it started to move again. And I'm like, I don't like this. And he's like, Yeah, I don't either. And so I hopped down to watch him, and as he started to go back away from it because we didn't like it, it started to chase him like a zipper. And I'm like, Keep going, get out of here. <laughs> Because we almost put a C425 over the side that time. It's just like, are you kidding me? Oh, it was God. it was a mess. It was a mess. But that was that's my one really nasty sun kink. They eventually came down and fixed it for like the fourth time. So, jeez. <laughs> yeah, sun kinks, big railroad problems. Not a fun time. I know there was well, a. Uh, there was one that they had on the Dragon Silverton recently that was uh, pretty violently bad. <laughs> well, well, I think what happened was NS put their nice 135 pound rail up against our uh, 110 RE, which was ancient, and uh, the 135 pound rail won and shoved ours west. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> that would do it. All right, well, uh, I'm going to close things out here. Um, I got sent a couple things recently, uh, one of which I oh, did I'm open. Pull up. Let me pull up stream. Yeah, pull up stream then. Go ahead. Um, uh, Shark, Shark Tooth Bob? Am I getting my bobs right? Uh, he's been commenting in here today. It sent me some wonderful things from his time uh, on NS back east. So that was fun. A couple timetables and things. Um timetables rule books yeah how big is the timetable well it's only half an inch thick so um older issue of course at a not uh in date anymore but a couple timetables there to see comparison between the east and west so much appreciated my friend along with many other uh ns related accoutrements which was uh very neat to get including some uh, older even conrail stuff so huge thank you to bob for sending that stuff along i think there was a note in here rather than going and showing every little piece of this here. <clears throat> From Bob, hello Mark, I hope 2024 is starting off to, uh, good for you. I apologize that this didn't get shipped when I wanted to due to your line of work. We completely understand, my friend. I hope these good uh, these books and maps will be good reference for you in future 101 videos. You had five years at NS, three as a carman and two as a conductor. I know from one of your cursed train videos, you and your granddad had a soft spot for the Penzi, and so I thought you'd enjoy these books and maps on the territory I ran. There's some goodies in here also. Thank you for the community you created and the content you post, bringing Steam back for us all to enjoy from Bob. P.S. My handwriting sucks. It's actually better than mine. Uh, this, this handwriting was very, very legible. <laughs> So huge thanks to Bob, and that was that was very sweet and very kind. 
Um, because yes, my, my granddad and I do have a, a soft spot for the Penzi. He is from Philadelphia, so thank you so much, my friend. Um, and it looks like somebody else is doing economy things here. Why? I don't know why the birds are broken today, and it breaks my heart. The, the rest of the membership alerts are coming up, but the birds aren't walking. So I'm going to have to troubleshoot that. Um, sorry for that, but thank you, Nicholas Downs, for the 50 gifted memberships. Uh, and then as well, it looks like Charlie Campbell's here. Might change your rolling stock to ES&D. Also, cats and, and trains don't mix too well. No, they don't. So thank you. Uh, now, he's in the call. The pun master himself. One of the many pun and bad joke masters that we have here. From Corey Gibson. Uh... And you told me it's a shit post. I'm actually slightly concerned, but anyway, I'll have to see what this is. True to my word, I did not open it. It's been, uh, God, you sent this late last year, I know. So thank you for bearing with me and my lack of remembering things. It's all good. Let's see. What do we got going on in here? A good tape job. That's what we got going on in here. <laughs> I worked in logistics before. I know how to tape. <laughs> Good man. Good pirate. Oh, yes. Something to add to this whole experience. Typed. Oh. Dr. Professor Huber. Yeah, Dr. Professor. We're going to go with that one. Thank you. Open the box last. Okay. I've noticed in the three-quarter show at Layton's house there's a distinct lack of limes being chucked at anyone, so I got you a couple extra ultra-soft limes that hopefully won't damage anything with thrown. The limes also needed a good storage space to put them in, so there's some plush coconut bowl, which can also be thrown if the jokes get too bad. For what's inside the box, I saw these online and thought you needed one, so I messaged the seller about a custom order, and she got it done. Don't pick it up by the hat, it's only sewn on. Your corniest court jester, Corey Gibson. Well, Corey... We'll open the box last. I see the, the the limes, which are very cute, and they're very soft, so those should, should be should be safe for consumption, for throwing. And then yes, giant. This is very silly. You do in fact put the limes in the coconut, and that's actually that is honest to God what started the lime joke. That exact that exact joke is what got us almost into a bar fight. So. Uh, either you know the lore, or you just guessed the same way that Leighton was talking, which, not terribly surprising. Alright, and now for the, the box. The piece de resistance. Let's, um, let's see what we got going on here, you madman. Don't pick it up by the hat it's only sewn on. What hat would it be? Oh, goodness. It's got wash instructions on it. Oh my, oh my word. I'm I'm reading this, but um, this is a, this is out of control. This is a little this is too much of a shit post. So who this am I is... currently chasing down in number four? That'd be me. <laughs> <laughs> who? Corey, where, where in the hell did you get this? <laughs> who who makes these? Who makes this? This is um. This is a little, this is a little extra. Like I said, it was a shit post. It is a shit post. It is a Hyacinth-esque engineer bird head. Um, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to drink whiskey and wear this for a stream at one point. This is a fucking shit post. This I is a fucking it. shit post. So, I, I was it. aware of this. Corey was sending <laughs> photos and dear god it's so much different when it's actually there uh four i'm going into the siding there <laughs> i derailed on it so this is the oh shit well um well i, I, I have to do it uh I, one more time one more time i will say for everybody once again no shame if being a furry is your thing it is not my thing i just think the birds are funny but i will still wear this for the shit post, at least once, if not multiple times, with uh, shenanigans. So, uh, in your honor, Corey, take all your screenshots, you damn assholes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel ridiculous, but I will commit to the bit. So, uh, anyways, it looks like we've got a couple last top chats, and then I'm going to be out of here so I can get this bird mask off my head. 
when, when I'm not, to, to, to quote Greg Proops, when I'm not fighting, uh, I sit here with this fucking thing on my head. Anyway. <laughs> Appalachian uh, chaos. Uh, you found some old Colorado Railroad Museum coupons you found at your grandparents' house from 2000. Do you think you guys will still accept them? I have no bloody idea. That's uh, that's the other department. And Pyro Clay's in. You're working the old Pensy Main Pit East. That's wonderful. So, anyways, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much, Corey. There's a couple more for, for the shit post. More. And I see Nicholas Downs. We got our birds. Yeah, well, you got one bird. One bird. I'm gonna. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. Um, other than this is going to end up out of context on Facebook groups, and they're going to shit talk me for it. And it's whatever. Bitches can be bitches. Thanks so no, much for watching, everybody. We'll catch really you high, all you need next to start time. Wearing that.